Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Acting City Attorney, are you ready? Yes, sir. City Clerk? Yes, sir. City Manager? Yes, sir. Commissioner Bolden? Yes, sir. Commissioner Everett? Yes. Vice Mayor Everett? I'm going to say Vice Mayor yes. Murphy. I call this City Commission Workshop for Tuesday, October the 8th, 2019, to order at 5.08 p.m. May we please stand for the invocation given by Vice Mayor Mervin, followed by the Pledge of the Legion. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, as we come before you today, God, we say thank you. God, we ask you, oh God, as we come together today, God, to make the decisions for our city. We ask you, God, to look upon our commission, our city staff, our residents, oh Father. Father God, we ask you, God, to touch our hearts, oh God, and touch our minds, oh God, and lead us in the right direction, oh Father. Lead us in the right to make the right decisions, oh God, that we benefit to our city. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Babb. Present. Commissioner Bolin. Present. Commissioner Everett. Here. Commissioner Hill. Vice Mayor Mervin. Present. City Manager. Here. Interim City Attorney. Here. City Clerk is present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, staff, and thank each of you all from the uh, public for being out here tonight to participate in our workshop of Tuesday, October the 8th, 2019. This workshop of the city uh, of Pahok is being held to discuss the following presentation given by RLI 2019 respondents. Uh, just to give you a quick brief bright drown, we sent out uh, requests for letters of interest for our city attorney services. Uh, we had actually four uh, respondents, uh, two was disqualified, one because uh, the information was submitted late, the other one because the information wasn't completed. Therefore, we have two here tonight that will be uh, providing a presentation before this commission. After the presentation, we would ask if there are some questions from the commission for any clarification or anything we would like to ask, we would do that. Uh, we'll give the respondent up to 15 minutes uh, for their presentation. You don't have to take the entire 15 minutes, but you do have 15 minutes uh, for your presentation. Uh, we're going to follow the uh, presentation as presented in our workshop. So at this time, if there's no further questions from the commission how we're going to proceed, we will go ahead and get this uh, presentation started. At this time, City Clerk, would you call the first respondent? The first respondent is Ms. Bernadette Norris Weeks. Vice Mayor, Commissioners, I'm Bernadette Norris Weeks. I'm your current intern city attorney. I have with me today, along with myself, Michelle Austin Pammies, 
who is also with our firm. Um, we, this is the type of work that we do. Uh, we are a firm that provides governmental entities legal services. We've been doing this work for over 20 years now. We've been rep we represent cities currently in Miami-Dade County, in Broward, and in Palm Beach counties. And, um, and there are not a lot of firms that do this kind of work. I can tell you that we are the largest uh, minority-owned firm in the state of Florida providing um, legal services to municipalities. Um, there's very little that we have not seen uh, over a number of years of practicing law for municipal government. We are um, we're certainly qualified um, to uh, respond to your RLI, and we've done that. Uh, one of the greatest things that um, I felt great pleasure in, because our firm um, has a great reputation for doing this work, is the fact that in our very first meeting here, Commissioner Bolin um, talked about what a great job she heard uh, we have done in the city of South Bay and Palm Beach County. And um, we're very proud of that. And if we go back just to talk about some examples of things that we've done um, while representing municipalities, when we took over the city of South Bay, it was a city that had many, many lawsuits, including lawsuits with other governmental entities where um, they had been sued. We came in, we um, quickly, uh, within the two-year period, resolved the lawsuits that were pending, and we put a lot of measures in place to prevent other um, lawsuits from happening. Um, right now, we have zero lawsuits uh, pending against the city of South Bay. When we took over that city, the lines were out the door in terms of people coming to commission meetings to complain about various things. The state um, that the state was had had an oversight that it was undergoing with the city of South Bay. That is no longer the case. The city is doing very well. It is thriving. It is um, looked at right now as an, an area in the Glades area that has a, um, a, a great potential, and, um, and we've been able to enter into uh, several deals uh, with uh, developers to do different, different um, things in the city, including um, a, um, a, a, a convenient kind of a gas station that's a new, um, that just came online within the last 12 months. So the city is moving in a great direction. We also represent, um, in addition to small municipalities, we also represent large municipalities as well. We represent um, the city of Miramar, which is probably the, uh, the sixth largest city um, in the state of Florida. And, um, and so with doing this type of work, it uh, lends us the opportunity to understand what's going on in other cities, um, best practices for other cities, things that we can do to improve cities. Um, we look at all kinds of uh, agreements. Um, just recently, we completed an agreement, an economic development agreement um, that um, we have at your request. Um, you asked us to look to uh, opportunities with a possible developer, and we've done that. And and that developer now has the economic development degree agreement in hand. Uh, we're tough negotiators, we're tough litigators, and we do a great job. Um, we win. <laughs> and so the great thing about um, our firm is that we have a great reputation for winning. And that is Excuse whether it's- Excuse me, Weeks. Nice. You out of order, sir, in the front with the camera. If you continue to disrupt this proceeding, you'll be actually counted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And we um, are very fortunate to be in that position. Uh, we are qualified and certified to practice not only in all state courts, but also in all federal courts within the state of Florida. That is not something that you find, generally speaking, within firms, but we are prepared, if something is filed, to be able to go into federal court and state court um, as well. Um, we have uh, a lot of the qualifications that we have are outlined in our materials. Uh, one of the things that you may be interested in while we provide um, three to four attorneys in, to the city of Pahokee, you see me as the face um, in, uh, of the city uh, attorney's office when I'm here. But if I'm not here, we do have two other attorneys who are very qualified. And one of them you met, Lisa Crawford, and the other one is right next to me, Michelle Austin Pammies. Michelle and I work closely with the city manager. We, um, we have a lot of communication with him in terms of what kind of things are appropriate and not to go before you, what 
kind of ideas or issues um, need to be adjusted before they come before you. Um, we're very proud of the work that we've done since we've been within the city of Pahokee. Uh, for instance, um, we have been in a, you know, a part of what we do without uh, going too deep into detail, but a part of what we do is we're able to capture, reformat agreements, um, put them in the right way and right perspective so that you get them and they are, um, you can be assured that they have been researched or looked at before you get them. Uh, we've done that consistently with, since we've been here. Uh, one of the other things that you may have seen change uh, in your uh, packets uh, would be the way that the resolutions are presented. We pay attention to detail the resolutions of, if you look at these resolutions and ordinances compared to one that you may have seen um, even six months ago before we came, I think you'll find that um, it's a stark difference, not a, a, not a light difference, but a stark difference in terms of the presentation. So we think that we've upgraded um, the, the, the documents that you see and the contracts that you review um, so that they are um, done um, in a way that um, comports with other cities, uh, not only in the surrounding area, but throughout the state of Florida. We, um, we have a number of um, talented people within the firm. We um, do land use, we do um, real estate law, we do, um, we, we obviously write uh, contracts, um, resolutions, ordinances. Uh, we do all of the things, whether it's foreclosure, Michelle handles, um, the cases, municipal cases, and she'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute, um, that we have to go through for the city of Pahokee um, every other week or so in, uh, in Belle Glade. So we're behind the scenes um, doing a lot of things that you don't see. And while I don't uh, make reports, legal's a little bit different. So when you have your meetings and I say no report on the record, it's because we don't want to be in a position where we're diving into issues and put you in a position that is disadvantageous for the city because we say something in a public meeting that's used against the city. So when I have an issue um, such as tonight where we want to bring a shade meeting um, to the city to talk about a specifically, specific issue, um, those are the kind of things that we engage you on. Otherwise, uh, we do our work and we do it well and we do it uh, fairly quietly working in cooperation with the necessary staff. Um, I think I've been uh, in touch with um, all of you on different issues. Uh, we are available. We make ourselves available, whether it is on a weekend or in the morning or at night or during the day. Um, we, we pride ourselves on making sure that we are available to you and that um, you can ask us questions and we try to have good answers for you when you ask us those questions. Um, there are a number of different things that I could go through. Uh, we are a you know, highly qualified firm again. Um, all of us have worked hard. We've done all the right stuff that we're supposed to do. Um, all of us in the firm graduated at high levels in our class. Michelle was at the very top of her class. I didn't, I wasn't there, but I was in the, <laughs> the top third. And, um, and so we, um, uh, we're a smart group of attorneys and we come to you not um, people who aren't qualified to do the work, not begging for the work, but we come to you as qualified people to do the type of work that we are um, well versed to do and we've been doing. So um, without delay, um, I introduce to you Michelle Austin Panis. Good evening. Good evening. I'm not going to add too much to what the content of what Bernadette said, but I'd like to introduce myself a little bit to the commission because you've seen me come here before um, and really as a city manager and the city clerk that I deal with most regularly. So in terms of my background and experience, I've been practicing for over 23 years. I start, started at Holland and Knight, which is one of the largest law firms in Florida. It's not the largest at the time. And um, in their corporate department, that's where I worked. I also did city work. Um, there was a partner representing the city of Carl Gables at the time, so I was doing municipal work. I went on to do different things, including being the general counsel of a state agency in Tallahassee. The agency is the, was the Agency for Workforce Innovation. It's now the Department of Economic Opportunity. I was that agency's first general counsel and put into place most of the structures that are being used today in the legal department. I've been um, practicing now with Bernadette for a number of years and our focus main focus has been municipal law. And we've grown the firm. We've been able to expand, like she said, 
into Miami-Dade, Broward County, and Palm Beach County representing cities. We believe that working in Belglade, I'm saying Belglade, working in Pahokee is, is extraordinary because we have work in South Bay. We've done excellent work. Um, and this is in addition to that. It would be a bonus for us to be co continuing to work in this region. We really appreciate the work we've done for you so far. We're proud of the work we've done for you so far, and we hope to have the co opportunity to continue to do it. Um, just one more time, there is no area of practice that a municipality would need assistance with that we are not capable of providing and effectively. And in terms of our litigation skills, we've represented clients, including municipalities, in litigation where we have published cases in federal court where we win. <laughs> and um, it's something that you can research and have a look at. And um, I think that we've done good work for you thus far. We'd like to continue to do the work. And I think you'll be very proud of the quality of the legal work product that's put out by the city of Pahokee. Thank you. Thank you. So in short, um, we thank you for the opportunity. We hope to continue to uh, do work for the city of Pahokee. And um, we are very proud of the work we've done, like Michelle has said. And we, um, we're here and available for you if you have any questions. Thank you. One more comment in closing. When I did say Belglade, is because I actually go up to the to, to court in Belglade for, this, for the city of Pahokee. <laughs> I go there where we represent the city in the open container cases, which are criminal matters, and we've been doing that since we've been here as well. Thank you. At this time, City Commission, having heard the uh, presentation, are there any questions you would like to ask of the respondents? Uh, it's not mandatory, but just for clarification or anything you would like to ask them. And we'll start with Vice Mayor Mervin. I don't have any questions, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Everett. I would like to wait until uh, both candidates. Uh, Thank you, sir. Can we do that? Can we wait till both have done it and then ask our questions? If that's your preference, yeah, we can do that. Okay. I agree. I'd like to do that as well. Okay. I guess I'll follow suit also. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. The next responder is Nason Yeager Gerson Harrison Fumero. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we're very pleased to be here tonight to speak to you. Uh, my name is Carlin Kowalski, and this is my partner, John Fumero. And we'd like to uh, be a bit informal and, and make sure you get to know us and what we do, what our qualifications are, and um, a little bit of our personality as well, just so you. Uh, get a flavor for who you're dealing with and how they might interact in in your city matters. So um, just to start with, um, we have three three lawyers on our Pahokee legal team. We have a, a firm of 27 lawyers. Uh, we have two offices in Palm Beach County. And um, those lawyers bring with us a depth of uh, legal knowledge. We've got everything from you know commercial litigation to real estate to um, all kinds of business matters. Um, uh, Mr. Fumero and myself specialize in government work, and uh, we've been doing it for a long time. Both of us have pra been practicing law for over 30 years, so we're, we've uh, seen a lot of uh, different issues throughout our legal careers. Um, I mostly recently was the uh, Deputy General Counsel at the South Florida Water Management District just up the road. So I'm, uh, with that experience, I'm pretty familiar with issues in the Glades communities and um, uh, got to know a little bit about your industries here. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Just, just add in, good evening, Mr. Mayor. and. Commission members, my name is John Fumero. As Carlin said, uh, we've spent our professional life in government or representing government. And if you would, uh, we submitted a proposal to you. In that proposal, I'm just going to highlight a few things. And I would urge you, as you deliberate and make a decision, to please contact some of the 
local governments, the cities that we have represented to get a reference because I can tell you that uh, I believe I've been effective for my clients. Uh, I have represented clients in federal court and in state court. I've argued before all of the district courts of appeal in Florida in published opinions, which you can just Google to get that information. Um, I have been retained as an expert, not as a lawyer, as an expert in public records, sunshine, and ethics laws. I recently this year uh, testified in Martin County. I don't know if you've read, but two Martin County commissioners were criminally charged with public records violations uh, by the state attorney in Martin County. It was a very serious issue. I was brought in as an expert in public records law and testified in court and for Commissioner Sarah Hurd's trial. Um, we are a member of the Palm Beach County League of Cities, and we've seen some of you at the, at the League of Cities luncheons, uh, because this is what we do day in and day out. You know, in, in terms of the representation, uh, I have represented Martin County, Lee County, Palm Beach County, the City of Port St. Lucie, City of Atlantis, Fort Lauderdale, the City of Miami. I was the former general counsel of the South Florida Water Management District. So we know what it is to represent individuals like you in the public eye. We know what it means to be accountable to the uh, electorate, what it means to be transparent to the electorate, because that's what we've done for our professional lives. Drafting ordinances, uh, drafting any kind of quasi-legislative uh, items that comes before you is something we've done. Uh, you, as the commission, you set policy. My job and the manager's job is to execute on that policy. And that's what we've done our entire career. Public finance, uh, bond work, uh, land use, zoning, comp plan, I've been involved in hundreds of administrative proceedings, and, and I am presently involved in administrative proceedings dealing with land use, planning, and zoning issues uh, before the city of Boca Raton, uh, the city of Atlantis. I have uh, filed some uh, legal challenges for the city of, uh, I'm sorry, the Palm Beach County on some, on some matters on behalf of the city of Atlantis. Uh, we've also have some uh, extensive utility experience I have been in this room on numerous occasions because I was the former general counsel of the Glades Water Authority. And when that was my firm formed the Glades Water Authority, working with Palm Beach County, ultimately, as you all know, that authority uh, transformed uh, into a, a different structure. But while it was a water authority, I was here working with Pahokee, South Bay, and Bell Glade, and the county to try to make it work and do what was a historic effort and a critical effort for the communities out here in the Glades. So I know the Glades issues, not just because I was the general counsel and director of governmental affairs at the Water Management District uh, for 15 years, but also because part of my practice involves dealing with uh, issues involving agriculture, economic development. I've represented the Economic Development Council of Lee County, uh, Lake Okeechobee. There are major issues involving Lake Okeechobee that I don't have to tell you, you know better than I do, have a significant impact on you as a city and these communities. Uh, I have lived Lake Okeechobee issues, and I mean literally and figuratively for my adult life because I've been involved in those issues beginning with my work at the Water Management District. Uh, I'll just end with a, a few important points here. Real world experience counts. So when you look at our proposal, uh, and if you are inclined to consider us, uh, I would ask you, as I said, look at the references, call the city manager in Port St. Lucie, where I didn't do work for the city of Port St. Lucie. I was the city attorney for the city of Port St. Lucie. I've done work for dozens of municipalities, but the city of Port St. Lucie is the eighth largest municipality. I was the city attorney, and I managed a seven attorney in-house office that they had. I managed that for two years until they were able to bring in another attorney to serve as the, they, they don't hire a firm there. They're large enough where they uh, have their in-house city attorney. Many large municipalities 
when you get to a certain point, you hire in-house staff. For a municipality like Pahokee, it makes sense for you to bring in an outside firm to provide you with counsel. But uh, as I said, real-world experience, being understanding what it is that you deal with as elected officials, understanding that I have to work with the manager day in, day out to help execute the policy that you set here in these meetings is very important. Dealing with public records laws, you, I don't know if you've heard, but there are firms and individuals out there now that are preying on small municipalities, filing false public records requests, and then suing when they allegedly don't get a response or a timely response to that request. I've been involved, I don't read the cases, I've been involved in public records lawsuits on behalf of local governments defending those lawsuits. Uh, ADA claims, uh, there's also been recent case law about uh, ADA claims having to do with uh, individuals that are hearing or vision impaired and websites. Uh, and that's an area I, uh, frankly, if I were retained as one of the areas I would work on, you have, that's an area you really need to address uh, sooner rather than later. So uh, we uh, have the capabilities, we have the experience, we have the know-how and institutional history out here in Palm Beach County in general and in the Glades specifically. We would welcome the opportunity to come and serve the commission and work hand in hand with your manager and your staff to make things happen in this community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. City Commissioner, if you would stand, continue to stand, what I'm going to do is just do the reverse opposite. Uh, we had the first presentation. There was a second. We're going to ask a question now, if you have any, to the respondent that's here now at the podium. So again, I'll start with, uh, okay, Commissioner Everett. Um, one of the questions that I have is with regards, you spoke to the heart of small communities. Um, and you spoke about how oftentimes firms or lawyers have been praying on small communities. And um, sometimes we can, we, our small communities are great, there's a charm, but then there's a double-edged sword when it comes to small communities. What have you done? Well, let me ask, have you had, have you had previous experience with small communities and the nuances that uh, working in some small communities do bring? Yes, so local government work, and you know this better than I do, this is where the rubber meets the road. You are close to the flame. And, uh, and I can tell you in large cities and in small cities, you know, when you implement certain rules, policies, ordinances, you hear about it. You hear about it from a very vocal electorate. And so I, I can tell you right now, I represent a small municipality in, in Hendry County, and it, they are trying to uh, develop some land use policies to move from a rural area to, uh, I wouldn't want to say urban because it's not even close, but policies like having to do with uh, animals that you can keep on your property, and it is gotten very controversial. There have been issues I've dealt with with the use of all-terrain vehicles in residential areas and you have a very tight-knit uh, ATV community. If you, if you propose a policy, you'll have 300 people show up in the room. So I've dealt with those very difficult issues. I understand that we have to interact with the public. We have to give the public a reasonable opportunity to indicate what their position is. We have to listen, but ultimately the decision rests with you. And so uh, to answer your question, yes, I've dealt with some very difficult, very controversial issues throughout my career. That, If you're involved in representing government, it's almost by definition, you deal with some very controversial issues because this is where the rubber meets the road is at the local government level. You work for, you know, I work for a large agency you do interact a lot with the public, but there's nothing like local government. You are in the trenches in terms of dealing with issues and, and controversy. 
I'm going to just add a little bit that um, I think uh, you know our job is to listen to you, you the commissioners, um, because you're the voice of the community, and um, you know our job is to be really good listeners. And if you're trying to solve a problem, if you're trying to develop an ordinance or or address a situation, we want to understand what you're trying to achieve and help you get there. That's our goal, and that's our training is to write those things down in whatever it might be, ordinances um, or any other kind of legislative type thing, contracts, whatever, but to try to help you achieve those goals and uh, bring you together to, um, to, to reach them. I, I don't want to take up all the time. I had a few more, but yeah. uh, maybe you're going to ask the one I was going to ask. Um, and and they're, they're basic, basic uh, general questions. But what? And it might be somewhat unfair to ask this question. But what do you know about us? What research have you done um, as a potential um, a rep legal representative? What sure. do you know about us at this point? So. What I know about Pahokee is what I know about the struggles that uh, the Glades communities have been dealing with, namely economic development and balancing, you know, we have an agricultural industry here, but is that the future? Can there be economic development opportunities to uh, broaden the spectrum? Uh, that's been a challenge, frankly, that the, the Glades communities have been dealing with for decades. And uh, I remember in the 90s, there was a big push for doing Lake, uh, the Lake Okeechobee, you know, ecotourism. And there was a lot of interest. Note the marina that you have here. There, when it was built, people thought this would be one of the economic engines to start bringing activity to the community. Unfortunately, a lot of those haven't played out. But that, that is a, a constant struggle. And uh, frankly, in terms of our research, we are we, one of the first things I looked at is, did you have a city attorney before, and what happened? So I'm aware of that controversy that happened as well. Hmm. Okay. What position do you take when it gets um, highly political, divisive, yeah. uh, when the community seems to be polarized? Yeah. That's what? What, what position do you take as a legal representative? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't take a position. My job is to represent you and the city. I'm not an elected official. I don't, my, my, my position is to defend this city and the decisions made by this city. Uh, I will provide counsel to you as a body and as individuals. To be quite candid, my job is to protect uh, you as commissioners to make sure that our decisions are legally defensible. If you, I've been doing this for a long time and I've worked in many political forums. If you ask me for a political opinion, I'll give it to you, but that's not really my purview. My purview is to uh, counsel you and then defend the ultimate decision that comes out and not really take a position on an issue. We identify risks and let you know about them and then give you counsel on how to minimize and avoid those risks and try to move ahead with what you're looking to do. So you wouldn't wait. You would tell us immediately if we were heading uh, in a direction that was not legally safe. Absolutely. So you wouldn't save it in your satchel. <laughs> No. So, you know, a lot of the work uh, of uh, an effective city attorney doesn't happen here. If an issue pops up here, it's late. It's too late. It's going through the agendas, going through the backup, making sure that you're all briefed, making sure there are no surprises at a commission meeting. That's what uh, I would do working hand in hand with the manager. You don't want surprises and you want when something's on the agenda, it better be fully vetted. And so that goes a long way, sir, to preventing those big controversies. But they happen. Uh, and that's the city attorney's job is to anticipate. And again, that's what you get with, uh, you know, just between the two of us over 60 years of experience. You, we've been there. We've been in many battles. And we know how a lot of those battles turn out because when you have fought many battles, you can counsel on whether you go through door A or door B. 
Commission of all we can. Is he done? Are you done? I, I want to allow no? everyone to ask a few questions. Yeah, okay. I don't want to. Well, that's okay. Um, Ms. Kowalski, how, how did you hear about the position opening? Um, we kind of, uh, you know, we have a service that looks at local government um, uh, contracts, and, and so that's how we found it. Yeah. Okay. Have either one of you ever been reprimanded by the ABA or ethics? No. Never. Okay. Great. No bar complaints, no reprimands. <laughs> Great. Okay. And what's your ranking with the Florida Bar? We're both um, AV rated, the highest yeah. ranking the, allowed by the both bar. Both of us as well as the bar. Okay. So are we getting a two for one package here? That's a, that's a <laughs> thank you for making that point. So even though we are a 27 person firm, uh, I like to be very candid. So. Uh, while we have an incredible breadth, what we presented to you, we call it the Pahokee team, and your proposal is three individuals. So myself, Carlin Kowalski, and Jack Rice. Jack Rice isn't here because he's at a planning and zoning meeting right now. Uh, he, is, he has a master's in land use planning. He's a planner who went to law school. Uh, so he's part of rounding out our team. So you would get the three of us, but you, you know, the city attorney position would be something that uh, I would take, uh, and then uh, when I'm not available, Carlin would take. Uh, and of course, if you had questions uh, during the course of the week, we're all available. Um, you know, on land use matters, because Jack Rice is frankly extremely experienced, we'd probably bring him in if you had, I, I do a lot of planning and zoning work, but. Uh, we probably bring him in to assist if you needed to revamp uh, your land development code. Jack would be the guy to do it. But it's a three-person team that we've proposed to you, ma'am. Okay. And, oh, last one, yeah, okay. The two models that you gave us for, I think you gave us two models, correct, yes. for the fee? Yes. Okay. One, it says um, fixed monthly, and then hourly two forty-five after that, right? Yes, ma'am. So you know we were unable to identify online much information in terms of your past legal services budget. Mm -hmm. um, so we've proposed, and I've done this with numerous municipalities, and that is, you know, it's really foolhardy for me to sit in front of you today and say. Uh, I'll do it for X dollars because until I understand your needs and priorities, it's difficult to build a budget. For example, if you say, I need you to be here three days a week. I need you to cover X, Y, Z uh, meetings, not just of the commission, but board meetings, appointed boards, uh, be involved with economic development council meetings. Well. That's another thing, but if the, we need to understand your needs and priorities. So one thing I would typically propose is give us 30 days. We come on board. In 30 days, we deliver a budget to you based on uh, talking to each of you, including the manager, to understand what are your needs and priorities. Uh, for, you know, I recently uh, went with my daughter to purchase a car. She got a Ford Fiesta. She's not buying a Cadillac. Uh, it's really what you want. You want a Chevy? We'll build a Chevy for you. If you want a Cadillac, we'll build a Cadillac. It's really what your needs and priorities are uh, uh, in, in terms of whether it's you know hourly or, or, or fixed rate. Typically, we do a, a monthly fixed fee, and we work out a, a scope of services. And that scope of services can be this big or it can be this big. It's really a function of the, the level of service that you're looking for from your city attorney. We can come up with a base proposal, and then from there, as we indicated in our in our proposal, we have a, a simple scope of work, you know, ordinances, drafting ordinances, resolutions, attending commission meetings, and have a, just a simple flat fee associated with that. It's really what you want and what you need. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask a few questions. Why this particular geographical area? 
Uh, I live and work in Palm Beach County. We're, we're in Palm Beach County. This, this is our backyard. I, my practice is throughout Florida. I've uh, done government work from Jacksonville to Miami. I'm sorry, to Monroe County. I've gone, done work in the Keys. I've done an extensive amount of work on the West Coast. So we do local government work, and we're here because we're in Palm Beach County. We're a 40-minute drive from our gardens office. Uh, briefly describe an ethical situation you had to deal with. Uh, uh, ethical situation? Um, I, can, I can think of sure. an example. <laughs> uh, On behalf of a client. Yes, sure. Uh, at the Water Management District, you know, we had a whole new board, uh, group of board uh, members come on. And a lot of um, issues that board members face, um, we, have, of course, we had to do the training for them, your basic training that you all probably have had at the League of Cities and whatnot about ethics and records and open government and those kinds of things. Um, but a big issue going on now is social media, and so the, and being involved in um, outside uh, boards and other organizations. So, for example, we had several board members that were involved in outside organizations, and so we had to really talk to them about um, their communications at those outside organization meetings and whatnot. And um, of course, like I said, social media, things on uh, that organization's website where you're commenting. And so that's something that every uh, person in public office needs to be uh, cognizant of so that, you know, you don't want to give the impression that you're talking about the sunshine. So um, those are some recent things that um, we've on the horizon. And a lot of ethical issues that I've dealt with have to do with voting, where you have an elected official that has a, a an economic interest in an item that may come before and talking to them about what they're able to vote on and not able to vote on, what they are required to disclose in advance of voting. So those are issues that, ethical related issues that are frankly uh, come up on a fairly regular basis. And what would you do if you were assigned a case that was more, that you was morally opposed to? Morally opposed to? So, you know, as a lawyer, uh, I am uh, an advocate for my client. So uh, if it's legal and it's ethical, I represent my client. If I truly had a, a, like a moral crisis that I was dealing with, I would withdraw. That's me personally. Uh, but I've never come across that, a moral issue. Uh, as long as it's legal and it's ethical, I rep uh, my job, uh, an attorney's job, is to be a, an advocate for their client. That's what that's the profession I chose. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Now at this time, we would bring back up Weeks and her partner to entertain any uh, questions by the uh, commission. And I'll start with Vice Mayor Mervyn, if you have any questions. Mayor, the two questions that I had was asked already with the, uh, the other firm. Okay. We'll move to Commissioner Everett. Um, my questions are pretty much the same. Um, with regards to working in a small community, we definitely have um, charm but we also have nuances and mores that I guess makes for comes with a small uh, community um, and in keeping in, uh, in understanding that uh, how do you handle you know issues that can you know border the lines of being very controversial um, uh, what position do you take Yes, sir. What we do is we attempt to give legal advice. We attempt to stay out of the fray of, of things that go on, um, particularly in the city of Pahokee, for instance. Um, you know, we, we have been um, uh, and understand that this is a, um, um, a unique community. 
um, where people have very strong opinions on issues. But as legal advisors, our job is really to um, give legal advice um, and be definitive in that advice. We are very clear about what the advice is. You never have to wonder whether um, we, you know, where we stand on issues. But what we try to do is really to stay out of the politics. We don't. Um, pit commissioners against each other. We don't um, pit the public against the, the commissioners. We don't do any of that. We simply deal with the issues as they come to us that are legal in nature, and we give the very best advice that is research that we can. So understanding the complexities. Um, we also know that um, having represented, our, there's a couple of cities we've represented for a very long time. One over a period of 15 years, and we've seen a lot of changes in that city. When the city, um, when we first got there, it was a very, um, um, uh, you know, there were different sides that were very adversarial in the city. We've seen that change over time. So I've been around long enough to know and do this kind of work to know that um, the tide changes in, in places. But we, what we try to do is be consistent, um, consistent in um, our demeanor, consistent in representation, and really just uh, pay attention to uh, the law and the legalities connected with the position of city attorney. I'd like to stress that we are city attorneys, contracted city attorneys for numerous cities right now. We are not guns for hire. We're not just special counsel to cities. We are city attorneys, so we've been dealing with the issues that you face on a day-to-day, -day, and we've been dealing with those issues in a variety of cities, and some of them are small, just like the city of Pahokee. We have had the opportunity to work for larger cities, and we do have two larger clients, but we do have cities of this size that we're used to dealing with those issues as they arise. Um, with regards to, it was something mentioned in the previous uh, respondents' uh, presentation, I also, I, I, would, uh, I think it was in the Q&A, uh, with regards to um, transparency, uh, ensuring um, that uh, commission is made of, you know, uh, is abreast, made aware or abreast on issues, uh, making sure that we are legal. So I guess my question is, without hearing and hawing, are you, um, your, your position in making sure that we, things are vetted, um, screened properly, would you like to care to spout? Absolutely. Um, that's what we do. That's a part of what we do. Um, Mr. Chandler will tell you, uh, Mr. Williamson will tell you that um, behind the scenes, you know, we, we, we go to bat sometimes about uh, what we think is ethical, what we think is right, what we think is legal. And, um, and we try to make sure that those things get put forward. Um, so our ethics and, uh, is never going to be um, challenged. I'm never going to be in a position or any one of the attorneys who work with the firm where we believe that there is um, um, an ethical issue or a legal issue that needs to be brought to your attention and we don't try. So um, that's, um, you know, that's how we operate and I think that's a, a fabric of, uh, of, of our firm. Um. Are you done, Commission. sir? Commission. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where did you hear about the position being advertised? Um, well, I heard it. Um, I, I obviously I was here, <laughs> so um, I did not need to. I knew that you put forth the issue, and we responded to it. Okay. Have you ever been reprimanded by the ABA or the ethics? Never. Okay, great. I'm going to ask you kind of a different question than I asked them because obviously it's a different scenario. But um, I know you're the city attorney for South Bay, so. As an example, let's say the Business Development Board brings us a, a company that wants to build and, and manufacture and hire people in the Glades. And it comes down to between us and South Bay. And both commissions tell their attorney and their 
city managers to please negotiate and see what you can do to bring them in. How do you handle that? I don't see that as an issue, but if it were to come up and I felt that there was ever any kind of an ethical issue, I would um, ask for outside counsel to be brought in for one of the cities. I do not see that as an issue. Um, typically, that's not the way government works in, in terms of um, saying we can only have one and that's the end. But I can tell you that um, certainly we do have a, 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 great a great reputation in South Bay. And since you mentioned it, I will recognize one of our commissioners who's sitting right here. And, um, and uh, as a reference in the audience that um, that can certainly speak to our uh, qualifications and how we have been even handed in the way that we operate within that city. Thank you. Okay. Did you all know before it happened that there was a possibility of the city attorney getting terminated the night you were in the audience? Um, so <laughs> there, um, I received a call. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, quite, frank, quite frankly. And I've said it before, and um, I received a call um, from, commission, from Vice Mayor Mervin, and we came to the meeting. I had not met Vice Mayor Mervin or any of the commissioners on the dais prior to the night that we came to the meeting. Okay. Did you know Mr. Williamson in Broward County when he was in Broward County? No, ma'am. I had never met Mr. Williamson ever. And the first night that I met him was the first night that I came to the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And one quick question. Do the other cities that you represent, do they have uh, something similar to that ordinance 2019-02? Um, well, I will tell you that there are similar, um, I don't know what the ordinance number was, but I'm assuming you're talking about the rules of procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you that there is a similar ordinance in South Bay that works very well. And I know that because I see it implemented. And so I know that it works well. And so that I think would work for your meetings because having sat here for the last few months and understanding some of the issues that have come forward, including some of the comments that you all have made about your meetings and how your meetings operate, I believe it's something that will help your meetings to operate more efficiently and effectively. Um, it, the meetings in South Bay last about an hour and that's with a whole lot of people talking and a whole lot of activity yeah. taking place. So I know that, um, that that ordinance would work very well here and I think it will help to um, organize your meetings in a way that uh, you would appreciate later maybe not now but later thank you thank you Commissioner Bogue, maybe try to wrap it up. Uh, sweets uh, why this particular geographic area well, we are already, as you know, representing a city here. We've been um, in that city for about six or seven years now, and about six years, I guess. And, um, and it's, a, it's an area that we love. Um, we do other community things um, in the area, so it's not just um, a matter of just coming for meetings. Um, we are in Palm Beach quite frequently um, for a number of different issues. And the Glaze is a special area. Um, it's a beautiful area. It's an area that um, you, I think you have to have, and I grew up in an area kind of like Pahokee, so I, I, um, I it, which is very similar in many different ways from um, the area that I grew up in in Pahokee. And so I think I understand um, the type of community that it is, and it's appealing to me. The, the type of community that it is. How would your friends and colleagues describe you? Um, probably someone who is um, dedicated and um, uh, honest and um, I think um, someone who uh, cares about others. How would you describe yourself as a person? The same way. <laughs> Since I'm others, I can, I can say what I think. I think that Bernadette Norris Weeks, first of all, is brilliant. And I think that everyone would agree to that in her surroundings. And you can check the references because we talked about references. We didn't really delve into it, but you can call any municipality that we represent now or any that we've represented prior. Then the second thing I'd like to say, she doesn't rest. So Bernadette. <laughs> She's brilliantly working all the time. So she, um, we have these discussions because I try to keep my work hours within a certain time frame. I'm getting her two AM emails. So yes, she's a hard worker. Tell me about the situation where you failed. I don't know how to answer that question because I don't know that um, 
uh, failure is in my vocabulary necessarily. I always try to look at um, making uh, or finding something um, in every situation that can be a learning opportunity. Last question: Strive an ethical situation where you had to, where you had to deal with um, an ethical situation involving a city. Um, well. Um, there have been, um, I guess, a, a lot over the years, but um, we get questions um, um, a lot where there may be commissioners who are, um, and this is not in Pahokee, but, or in South Bay, <laughs> just so I'm clear, where we get commissioners who are um, uh, battling each other and it's a very public battle and you, you know, they try to kind of draw you into that battle. And so um, I think uh, in, in terms of trying to get you to say what someone else said or did or wrote or asked or, and so we, those are the kind of situations that we don't allow ourselves to be pulled into. We just try to be very professional, operate above the fray and, um, and, and, and let them know what the ethical issues are. In terms of ethics, um, you know, we work with commissioners all the time in terms of their own uh, asking questions about different things and what has to be done if, if issues come up and whether they think they have conflicts of interest. And so we um, give opinions on all of those things a lot of the time based on whatever city it is because all of the cities are different based on the uh, ethics codes and the inspector general's information that's on, the, you know, that and training. So we keep ourselves up to date. We also do um, ethics training. Um, we um, have been for many, many years attending the Municipal Lawyers Conferences. We've presented at the conferences. I presented at the Florida Bar Conferences. Um, actually, I have a conference that I'm doing um, just coming coming up um, within the w October 25th, I think it is, where I'm presenting on the issue of ethics. And so um, it's something that we, we, you know, we certainly take very seriously and, um, and we just try to impart that to our commissioners. Thank you. And thank to both of the uh, law oh, firms. Yes, I, one other thing, I was on the board for the Florida Bar dealing with the issue of ethics. So. Thank you. Thanks to both of the law firms for their presentation. Uh, City Commission, uh, we're going to have a decision to make either tonight or the following meeting. So we need to decide whether you're comfortable with the presentation and you have enough information to actually make a decision tonight. It would be my recommendation that we proceed and make a decision, not at this workshop, but at our regular commission meeting, but it up to the city commission whether or not you're ready to do that. That's one of the considerations. As far as the compensation for the law firms, uh, we will allow ourselves at least two weeks to negotiate, have the city manager negotiate a, uh, uh, a salary. Uh, compensation for them. Hearing no other further business before us, I will adjourn this workshop and we'll reconvene our meeting in five minutes.
We're going to be getting started in a few minutes, but we are looking for some additional seats. Uh, we know we have a large uh, crowd tonight, so we're going to try to accommodate as best as possible.
Okay, folks, we're going to get started in one minute. Uh, we won't be able to bring in additional chairs because of the uh, seating capacity for the uh, chamber, but we will move up the presentation from the uh, Glaze Regional Schools so that uh, we can uh, at least expedite that. So we're going to give ourselves another minute and we're going to get started. So just. Sir. Commissioner Bowling. Yes. Commissioner Everett. Yes. Vice Mayor Mervyn. Yes. I call this City Commission of the City of Pahokee regular commission meeting Tuesday, October the 8th, 2019 to order at 6 27 p.m. May we please stand for the invitation. M Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I apologize. Um, we do have to wait until the meeting is advertised at 6.30. I apologize. Can't start early, y'all. Three minutes. <laughs> Only about three minutes. Sorry. I apologize for that. Practice run. <laughs> Good practice run. She's going front and back, right? You told her front and back? I know. Yeah, front and back. They're two sides. The commission agenda. She always has such pretty outfits in the jewelry match. 
Okay, thank you. We're going to get started now. It's 6 30 officially. Uh, city clerk, are you ready? Yes, sir. City attorney? Yes, sir. City manager? Yes, sir. Commission Bolin? Yes, sir. Commission Avery? Yes. Vice Mayor Mervyn? Yes, sir. Thank you. I call this meeting of the City of Pahokia, regular scheduled commission meeting of Tuesday, October the 8th, 2019, to order at 6.31 p.m. May we please stand for the invocation given by the Reverend Lonnie Spry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Most gracious and eternal God and our Father, we come tonight in behalf of the city of Pihokee. Lord, we pray that you would bless this meeting in a way Lord, that when we can leave here knowing that we've been educated about our city, Lord, and help our citizens to understand this is not a boxing match nor a wrestling match, but this is a meeting to bless and to help our city go forward. We pray that you bless in the mighty way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Babb. Present. Commissioner Bolin. Present. Commissioner Everett. Here. Commissioner Hill. Vice Mayor Mervin. Present. City Manager. Here. Interim City Attorney. Here. City Clerk is present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, staff. And thank each of you all for being here tonight to participate in our regular scheduled meeting of Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. I'd like to just recognize some of the elected officials here. We have our school board district rep, uh, Marsha Andrews. Thank you. We have the mayor of South Bay, Mayor Joe Cowles. We have our former city commission and vice mayor, Mayor Alice Biggs. Thank you. We have represented from uh, County Commissioner McKinley office, Lisa Wilson. Steve Wilson. Steve Wilson. We have the mayor of the city of Bell Glaze, Steve Wilson. We have the vice mayor from the city of South Bay, Vice Mayor Betty Bernard. And we have a host of VIPs here, uh, mainly the school board uh, employees. Uh, we have principals, but we're going to have a presentation later on. I'll be here all night if I individually call their names out. But we thank you for being here. Uh, we have an exciting uh, presentation from our regional school district. Uh, I, if you don't know, uh, this is the first time in 20 years that none of our schools in the Glades have D's or F. All our schools have the C above average. And we're really looking forward to next year when none of our school would have C's, that's average. We're gonna be A's and B schools, and that's Amen. the goal. That's and the we goal. want this community to work behind our school system because it takes a village to raise a child, and we are that village. So we're gonna proceed with our uh, agenda as uh, presented. We, we're gonna move up, we're asking to move up the uh, school board uh, presentation if that's uh, mm -hmm. okay for our commission thank you at this time I would ask do we have any additions uh, city manager to our, our agenda yes mayor uh, audience uh, number 2019-02 uh, this ordinance uh, was on the first reading it passed uh, we want to put in on old business for continued discussion So addition and deletion there. Yeah. Thank you, sir. City commissioners, are there any additional additions, deletions of the minutes, mini, uh, agenda, sir? 
Hearing none, I entertain a motion for the adoption of the agenda with the add-on of Ordinance 2018-02 on the old business. Remember, I make a motion to accept the add-on on the old business or Ordinance 2019-02. Also, to move up the Glaze Regional Team and Pahokee Area School. Second. Thank you. It has been moved by Vice Mayor Mervin and properly seconded by Commissioner Everett that we accept our agenda as presented with the addition of Ordinance 2018-02 and the moving up of the uh, regional school presentation. Call for questions. Well, Here. before we uh, vote, uh, where, are we, uh, where are we moving it specifically on this? On the day? old business. And we're going to move no, the, the, the school the board presentation. presentation. Yeah. That would be uh, at the beginning. We'll do that right, right after, after the acceptance of the agenda. Yeah. Approval of the okay. agenda. Okay. All right. In additional questions, hearing none, are you ready for vote? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Mervin? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Everett? Yes. Commissioner Bolin? Yes. Mayor Babb? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Commissioner. The agenda is approved by unanimous vote. <coughs> now we'll move to our regional school presentation uh, of the Pahokee Glaze Area Schools. Do we have a representative at this time, Dr. Abrams and school board member Marsha Andrews? More. That's more. more. Good evening, everyone. I stand before you on behalf of the Glades region. Thank you, Mayor Babs, for giving us this opportunity to speak to everyone tonight. I'd like to, and also members of the uh, Pahokee uh, Commissioner's Office, I'd like to call all of the principals, the members of the Tri-Cities, uh, also other people who have supported us throughout this school year to come forward as we prepare to do our presentation on behalf of the Glades region. If I can get all of the principals, the assistant principals. I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As they come up, I will introduce myself. I'm Angela Moore, proud region superintendent of the Glades region. Um, actually had the opportunity to start this position last year. And so last year at this time, we were here introducing all of our principals as well as their assistant principals. We know you guys have a, uh, a heavy agenda, so we will have the principals to come forward uh, quickly so that they can be introduced. Um, but we're here to thank all of you for your support especially the members of the Pahokee City Commissioner's Office and the City of Pahokee. We did, as you heard Mayor Babb state, um, we all, all of our schools in the Glades regions have, region has a school grade of a C or higher. This is something that we were able to accomplish and it hadn't been accomplished in 20 years. So when school grades were released in 1999, uh, we've gone for 20 years where we were, weren't able to get uh, schools that were not on the DRF list. And so that was a huge accomplishment for us. But this is something that we weren't able to do alone. So even though I stand here as the region superintendent, we were able to do it because of the hard work of all of the people who are standing to my right. And so if I can just get all of them to come to the front, um, please. <laughs> I'm still waiting on you guys to come. I need all of you to come to the front, please, so that you can be recognized. And we're going to move this quickly, starting with Dr. McTeer, who's to my left. If you could just raise your hand. She is the instructional superintendent, and Dr. McTeer works with the elementary schools. And I've had the pleasure of working with the secondary schools. And so we did work together to make sure that we were able to accomplish this. We also have Ms. Johnson, who's standing next. She's the principal of Everglades Prep. Um, it's important for everyone to understand the role that Ms. Johnson and her, her school plays with the graduation rates of our schools. And so over the last couple of years, we've seen an increase in our graduation rates. And so as of right now, Pahokee stands at a graduation rate of 90 five percent this is an increase of three percentage points compared to last year um, and we know that the work that Ms. Johnson is doing with our students does attribute to that as well Dr. Abrams is standing also can you just wave Dr. Abrams she's the principal of Pahokee Elementary School and she also has some of her staff here as well so if we can get them to stand at this time we also have Dr. Hibbler who's here 
And Dr. Hibbler is here with his assistant principal, Ms. Henley, and also his SSC, Ms. Boswell. And so what we want to, we want to make sure that we recognize that Dr. Hibbler's school, Canal Point, was one of two schools that earned a school grade of a B. So let's give them a round of applause. We also have Mr. Denard, who was the principal of the middle school last year. Mr. Denard inherited both the middle and the high school last year. And so we did, uh, we went into that school. There were a lot of changes that were being made. I'm proud to say that Mr. Denard was able to improve his school grade points as well last year. And so Mr. Denard is here with members of his administrative team. Starting to his right, we have Ms. Slidell, Dr. Golfin, Mr. Uh, Lawson. Also, we have Ms. Twiggs, who's the SSC, as well as Mr. Tabatu, who's, who's also an assistant principal. Let's give all of them a round of applause. <laughs> and so, as I mentioned before, we could not do this work alone. We work very closely with members of the Tri-Cities Community uh, Committee, Education Committee. We have members of the Tri-Cities Education Committee who's here tonight. And we also had the support, which I think is very unique. We had an opportunity to speak at both commissioner meetings in Bell Glade as well as South Bay. And so the one thing that's very unique about the way we work as a region is we work with our mayors and we also work with members of the Tri-City Education Committee. And so a lot of the success that we've, we were able to accomplish this year, we accomplished it because of the collaborative effort of everyone working together. And so I am very uh, appreciative of the work that the Tri-Cities Education Committee has done over the years, as well as the work that they've done with us last year. I also want to recognize Mrs. Andrews, and I know she's going to come up and speak um, as well. Mrs. Andrews is our District 6 board member, and so she's very involved. Yes, let's give her a round of applause. She's very involved and has been very involved in our schools for years, and so we definitely appreciate the support that she's given to us. But we want you to know that we stand here as a united front, and so we cannot do this work alone. It's important for all of us to continue to work together because we know that if we work together, we can accomplish even more of what we accomplished last year. Our goal is to improve all of our schools, as we heard Mayor Babb state, that we expect to have all of our schools uh, earning a school grade of an A. Um, that is the goal, and so we're going to continue to work hard to make sure that we accomplish this, not for us, but it's for our students and this wonderful community. And so I thank you for giving us the opportunity to be introduced to you tonight. I'd like to turn it over to Mrs. Andrews, but I do want to recognize um, that we do have Ms. Biggs, who's here tonight representing Tri-Cities. We also have Mayor Kyles. You heard uh, Mayor Babs mention him earlier, and we also have Mayor Wilson, who is standing here tonight. And again, we come standing collectively as a Glaze Region team who continue to work hard for our students and we appreciate all of your support. Thank you. Just uh, very quick that we wanted to present to our commissioners for all the support and our mayor for us and the achievement that we've been having at the school. You guys are always there when we need you. So at Polk Community Senior High School, we are finally opening up our bookstore, which will start next week. So we want to make sure that the commissioners have the first shir shirts to come out of our bookstore. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Babb, Vice Mayor Mergen, entire council, the administrative team, good evening to the community. It takes the village. I'm Marcia Andrews, your school board member. I bring greetings from our superintendent, Dr. Donald Fanoy, and all seven school board members. But I want to thank you all. Community, you elected me in 2010 to make a difference in the lives of the children in the Glades region. I've been working on the ground, in the community, in the schools to help improve student achievement. I can tell you 
we did great this year. Under this leadership team of Miss Angela Moore, come on up here again, Miss Moore. It takes leaders to make it happen. Dr. McTeer, where are you? Come back up here. These are the leaders who actually work with the principals. Come on up, Dr. McTeer, again. Absolutely. <laughs> and then when you think about how do we get the work done, it's because of our principals, because of our teachers, because of our assistant principals, because of our cafeteria workers, our librarians, our student assistants. It's all of the village that makes it happen for the children. And it surely is because of the community, the community spirit that helps us to do the things that we want to do. I look at the commission and I want to tell you that you've been working with me since I've been elected in 2010 up until this day. I thank you for presenting the key of the city to me hard and it made me know I had to really work extra hard here in Pahokee <laughs> to make things happen. And I'm just so proud of the progress that we've made in our schools. The superintendent is happy. Everybody's happy. We've been celebrating, but we know that academic achievement for all children is essential. Success for them is very essential. And when I see the principals and I see the teachers and the team that you see in here tonight, they're committed. Many of these people get up at four o'clock in the morning to be ready to open the school up at 7 a.m. or before to make sure our children are ready with breakfast, with whatever they need to be successful, with the best teachers ever. As you know, I thank you for passing the referendum because now we have a police officer in every school. Every school we have a police officer. And we have mental health services, a mental health counselor in every school because we truly want to make sure our students are safe, we want to make sure that they're happy, and we want to make sure that they learn and they grow and progress to the best citizens they can be and have a wonderful life. So I could not do any of this without all of you, and I want to thank the schools, the people who truly make it happen every single day. Thank all of us, because we are truly the family. Thank you. I want to leave you with this. Our motto for the Glades region is we're growing greatness in academics and athletics because it's in our DNA, and we want to thank all of you for being a part of our village. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank the region of school system so much, and we're so proud of all the effort you have put in to educate our young folks. Uh, we know we have an outstanding reputation uh, for being a football community, an athletic community, but that's not the case anymore. Our academics have risen and raised the bar, so we appreciate that very much, and we're going to work and continue to work with this school district to improve our children's lives and their condition. Thank you so much. I forgot to uh, I asked the commission during the uh, addition to the agenda uh, whether or not you want to consider uh, our legal team, the appointment of our legal representative uh, that need to be added to the agenda if that's your desire. If not, then it will be on our agenda <coughs> at our next commission meeting. In, any comments on that or any uh, recommendation? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to offer a motion that we place um, uh, the decision for our legal on the agenda. Second. Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner Everett and properly second by Vice Mayor Mervin that we place on our agenda the selection of our legal representation. Call for questions. Where we put that? Yeah, you want to make that new business? We'll do it on the new oh. business. It's fine. Okay. No new business tonight. Any other questions? Hearing none, are you ready for a vote? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Everett. Yes. Vice Mayor Mervin. Yes. Commissioner Bolin. Yes. 
Mayor Babb. Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Commissioners. We will now move our selection of our legal team on our agenda on the new business. Okay, at this time, we would uh, have our citizen comments. Must be an agenda item only. Must have a comment card completed. At this time, City Clerk, do we have any comments card completed pertaining to agenda items only? Yes, sir. The first one is from Mr. Bobby Coven. Bobby Colvin, 3096 Bacon Point Road. When so many things get added, it's so hard to make a list of what I'm wanting to say. I had my things in about three different places. But uh, on September the 30th, 2019, I sent a letter to the mayor, as well as copies to all the commissioners and the city manager, of some concerns that I had for the city. In it, I gave comments on why I see Ordinance 2019-02 as being evil. Also in that letter, I detailed why I thought it was unfair not to consider Attorney Brandenburg for our city attorney. The truth cannot be hidden forever. I hope that letter will be accepted as part of the public record for this meeting so I don't have to read it uh, because everyone, you, you have it. I'd also like to remind you that on this most holy day on the Hebrew calendar, Yom Kippur, I pray that the God of Israel will also be recognized as the God who watches over and cares for the city of Pahokee. If our commission will deal honestly and fairly with the citizens, God will bless them. If, however, they offer up evil ordinances like 2019-02, I pray that God will intervene and will judge as he has done in the past when offerings were not acceptable. And I'd like to just mention what happens on this day, Yom Kippur, in the Old Testament. The high priest went into the Holy of Holies only one day a year on this day to offer sacrifices for the people, a covering for the people. He wore bells and had a rope attached to his leg so that he could be dragged out if the offering were not accepted. Matter of fact, two of the high priest's sons, Aaron, uh, Nadab and Abihu, he lost two sons due to this. And on this Day of Atonement, I just pray that our commission will do right. And I hope God will be able to bless Pahokee. Thank you, sir. The next one is from Miss Catherine Marvis. Thank you, Catherine Marvis, 1838 East Main Street, Pahokee. Um, I also wanted to discuss the agenda, and um, I notice every time I see the agenda, there are several items that are left off at the meeting before, but maybe not carried forward for old business and nothing. So it's very difficult for us to look at an agenda and see, like Bobby said, what we want to comment. So today I'll keep my comments to this ordinance. This is 13 pages of a, an ordinance that is almost like a bill that needs to pass through the government. It is so filled with other items that may or may not get passed because it's not as important as a big thing. And some of it is flowery, some of it is um, excessive verbiage. We need to be able to understand exactly what the differences are between what we have today and what this ordinance is proposing. We need to understand it. Right now, in my personal opinion, this commission reports to the city manager. 
quite often I have heard commissioners sit up there and say, I have not read this document, or I just got this document. Could you tell me about it? The city manager tells you about the document, explains it to you, and then you vote on it based on a synopsis. That is a big red flag for me, and it disturbs me greatly. The, some of the looks that I get sometimes disturb me greatly. I find them arrogant and unnecessary. And I'm sure you get them from the audience too, so you know how it feels. I want you each to look at your oath, look at your duty and your responsibilities to act as an independent commissioner for the citizens and the city of Pahokee and remember that you report to the citizens. While you have the final say-so and what you vote on and what you do, the ball is in your court right now, but we hold the tickets to the game. And I want you to get together, start doing it right. If you don't understand a document, if you have to ask that many questions about a document before you vote on it up right here, it behooves you to set it aside and review it some more, not take somebody's word for what it means. That's your responsibility. That's your duty. That was your oath. Thank you, ma'am. The next one is from Rebecca Bush. Hello, Rebecca Bush, 1548 East Main Street. Um, I, I'm here tonight to speak against this ordinance, um, but I want to give you a little bit of background on some of the cumulative effects of what drove me here. And in order to, to stay within the three minutes, I've written down my remarks, so indulge me as I read them. <clears throat> I'm here this evening because in recent months I've experienced some things that caused me great concern. A few months ago, I needed to speak to the city manager about an issue concerning the city. I stopped at City Hall two times in one day to try to see him. On my second stop, I was told that he refused to see me or to even give me an appointment. I also placed calls, texts, and emails that went unacknowledged. It was only after I expressed my displeasure on Facebook that I got any response. In fairness, uh, Commissioners Mervyn and Everett did answer my emails and texts after that time. I know you guys hate Facebook, but when people are desperate, they, get, they turn to desperate measures. I did get a response after I got on Facebook only. Um, next, I watched in shock and disbelief the night the city attorney was ambushed. There is truly no other word for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've taught civics before, and I must say, the video of this meeting would serve a teacher well as a demonstration of a textbook violation of the Sunshine Law and why the law actually exists. What happened that night was a well-orchestrated procedure, obviously known well in advance to all present except for Commissioner Bolin, who tried very hard and in vain to be brought up to speed on what was about to be voted on. She was silenced, rudely and abruptly. Weeks passed, then comes the ridiculous waste of taxpayer dollars on a fake field that it exudes and excludes <clears throat> large segments of our population. I won't, even, I won't even go into the debacle at the lakefront. We have a blatant attempt now to change an ordinance that clearly is designed to silence dissent, telling commissioners to whom and when they may speak during a meeting is absurd, as is limiting the length of a commission meeting. I suggest that if the time you get home from a meeting is important, perhaps you should not have run for your seat in the first place. There are other problems in the ordinance too, but I'll leave it here, particularly when it comes to paying legal expenses, but I'm not gonna go into that. I urge all of you to vote no on the passage of this ordinance. It is beginning to appear that the city manager is a puppeteer and you all are willing puppets. He is crafting a local dictatorship. Please wake up and represent those of us who elected you. Thank you. The next one is from Linda Moss. 
have to do all in this part of the meeting. In meeting. Um, <laughs> Linda Moss, 2827 Bacon Point Road. I actually, a lot of what I've had in mind has been said differently than I was going to say it, but part of it is I do feel that this ordinance is creating a divide. It's cutting off citizens from the commissioners, and I think that's a very inherent relationship that we need to keep very open and very honest between the group of us. The other thing I was going to talk about that isn't a consent item, it is accountability, and the accountability for me has to do with the marina. And I think it is time, I don't know, but I look at the five of you, Felicia's not here, for accountability. Chandler's our city manager. He's been here three years, four years, four years. Okay, so, he's, so he may be here another four or five years, whatever. But he's gonna come and he's gonna go. City managers are gonna come and go. And we're still gonna be accountable to the five of you, our city commissioners. So when I have issues, I feel it's my responsibility to come to you. And I think the city ordinance, the way it's been presented, kind of creates a vast challenge for us to be able to come to you. He is your employee. He is our city manager. And it's time that we get answers from you. Uh, from what I hear at city council meetings, I, I can't say Chandler doesn't contact me and talk with me, because he does, and I do appreciate that. But it does sound like that's not the norm of what happens to a lot of the people in the community. So the community needs to be able to come to city commissioners to get answers and know where they can help and, and find out what they need to do to move forward. So your accountability is very important to the citizens of this community. The next one is from Sam McKinstry. Sam McKinstry, 371 East Main Street. I just want to make the commission aware before they make their final decision on what attorney that they decide that there are several issues in Broward County regarding the current interim city attorney. I'd like to ask her if she's got the over $11,000 worth of back taxes she had Broward <laughs> County settled. I'd also like to ask her how she got a commissary deal fast track through the airport in Fort Lauderdale. I'd also like to know how she uh, managed to get over $365,000 worth of government grants for her own personal use. Little things like that need to be addressed and dealt with before you make your decision on who you want for your city attorney. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I know we're in the middle of public comments, but we have endured a lot of uh, attacks, name calling, and, and of such. And especially with the interim city attorney, I think it's more than right uh, somewhere along this agenda that she could uh, uh, rightly confront her accusers with a response. Yeah, I think she was uh, asking to speak at that moment, but yes, Mr. she Mayor, could respond to anyone who have a derogatory comment made to voice them. I appreciate that, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Um, this is what we do. We're professionals, and so we, you know, oftentimes we don't sit, this is very unusual in that somebody would come and the things that were said by this gentleman were outright lies. This is the same man who, after I leave just about every meeting, yells profanity from the, from standing out while I'm going to the parking lot. So I will just say that it's not true. I don't owe anybody. I have no idea what he's talking about in terms of getting money. Um, I have no idea what he is referring to. And, uh, and so I would just like to say on the record, because I, you know, this is what I do. So I don't need my reputation scarred for uh, representing, um, you know, and doing the work that I do for a living. I, I have, we have a great reputation and I'm not gonna let him or anybody else try to ruin it. Sam, you, no, you're out of order, sir. If you interrupt this proceeding again, I'm gonna ask that you leave. But you sat Mr. Mayor, you need to check him. You're out of order. Meeting after meeting, it's ridiculous. Something needs to be done. It needs to be removed. Okay, Mr. Everything 
Officer, he interrupted four times. Yes, I please. would need to ask him to leave. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk, are there in addition to comments card? Yes, sir. The next one is from Wayne Bolin. My name is Wayne Bolin, 366 South Broken Road, Barfield, Iowa. <laughs> uh, I just like to say the ordinance of 2019-02. I I don't approve of it. I don't think it's. Uh, I think it'd be a legal nightmare. And Becky didn't want to talk about the legalities <laughs> of this ordinance, but you you guys are. I read things. And I'm not educated. I only had my business for 55 years since I was 21. And I manufactured my own products and sold them for 55 years. I don't know anybody, but I'm not educated. But anyway, the, um, the ordinance looks like it would leave people open to sue the city for almost anything, and in my opinion, because I read it and, and it's kind of going, against the charter too, a lot. And a lot of the charter was in there. And who authorized her to, to do this? That's, that's another question. So, you know, I just want to voice my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There are no um, additional comments. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, we'll move to our public service announcements. Let's also have a public service card completed. City Clerk, at this time, do we have any public service comment cards completed? Yes, sir. We have one card, Ms. Crystal Bruce. Crystal Bruce, um, 886 Sevilla Street, Pahokee, Florida. Basically, what that card was is that um, I'm back with a charity that I sit with. You know, it's been a while because, you know, my son had four brain surgeries. As everybody can see, I lost weight. I was really sick. But um, I had been working because I am building my own charity with some other things, and I was approved through the charity. I reached out to Keith um, last week, um, but I know you, you know, you did get back with me. Actually, you was there at the end of the meeting. Um, I'm setting up to do a car giveaway. What we do, we help struggling single mothers that give them cars if they go into school and they work. And I'm not talking about junk. I'm not talking about um, some fly by night thing or whatever. We are open for donations. We even take a car, we might overhaul it. But I have a process to it, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I'm just going to share this. There's a lot of knives in my back in this community. Okay? I'm going to just share this. So I am a fair person. So I did reach out. I want to invite all of you guys. And also, you have a congregation as you um, being a part of a congregation, as you being the commerce keep, you being the mayor, Felicia, and Chandler being the city manager. It's not limited to anybody because anybody might know somebody. I just have to have the letters. I am forming a small, small committee because this crystal, some things I never live my name down about, and I'm all right with that. But one thing nobody can take from me, my work in this community, and plenty, plenty other places. But the sad part about it, I see the people out there struggling. I hear the stories. Okay, I ain't going to get into the black, I ain't going to get into the white. But I'm going to tell you what I see from my black people. The cooning, the snaking, the rocky head games and all of that, it's a shame. Because I run into these people every day need help. And I went to a lot of people, I ain't going to get into calling no names. All I'm saying, all I want to do is help the people that I see struggling like me. 
it ain't no jobs, okay? It ain't nothing here. But a lot of the things that y'all work against I mean, people, it's not right. And Mr. Colvin, you're right. He snatched them out of there at the day of atonement. Because I'm gonna tell y'all something. This me, I'm not against nobody up here or out here. But I see a lot of things and know a lot of things, man. All I want to do is try to help some of the people that I see struggle. I want everybody is welcome to my table, but I ain't got time for games, snakehead, and all of that. I don't have time for that. But I want to bring this program here. But it's hard to bring somebody here when we on YouTube and they see the dysfunction in this. But I fight hard, man. I'm not against nobody up there out here. If it ain't about the community, it ain't got nothing to do with it. But that snake stuff, I'm calling y'all out. City Clerk, at this time, are there in addition to comments, cards pertaining to public service announcements? No, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We'll move on to the, well, we don't have any approval minutes. Uh, we don't have any consent agenda um, items. Mayor, you put it as general, you want to do a PSA? Yes. Um, Ms. Ursley from uh, Everglades Prep, she put it as general, but she would like to do it as public service announcement. Good evening, uh, Linda Johnson Ursley, principal at Everglades Preparatory Academy. You know, my colleagues came up before me and kind of set the harmonious tone. I think I'm gonna stay there too. But it's something that I just need to suggest and bring to your attention. I think it's an honor for the city of Pahokee to have a tenant that happened to be a school that impacts the other schools that are managed solely by the school district. That's an honor. I think we need to be treated in that capacity as what it is. When you have the leadership from the district to come and acknowledge the impact of our little school, we keep the schools afloat grade-wise. So it's a lot of good work that's happening over there. And it's a, quite a few folks in the community employed by the city on the dais have had people and family members who have graduated and are currently enrolled at the school. With that being said, commissioners, mayor, vice mayor, commissioners, I would like for Everglades Prep Academy to be a standing item on your agenda, being that we are your tenant that you should have just updates let the city manager come in and say is it any issues going on because i'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt being that the governor have mandated all schools in florida to have officers and certain things in place to harden schools we've done it as much as we could being that we are tenant to the city of Pahokee. Now I'm going to tell you, it hadn't been easy being a citizen. Well, first of all, I'm a true muck stepper, born at Glaze General Hospital, raised up in Belle Glade, moved to South Bay, been where you are. And it really upsets me to know that some things are not looked at in an urgent manner. We are school. We are accountable. We have to be in compliance. And when we can't, then it falls on me. And I have to protect my 115 children and do what I have to do. And I must say, you all have never heard from me as far as complaining. I've been dealing with this for a very long time. But I think you need to get more involved in what happens at Everglades Prep. Amen. Thank you. I think that's conclude our public service announcements. Uh, we don't have any approval of the minutes, no consent agenda items. 
Uh, we do have an ordinance, but it was moved to old business. I'm not quite sure, but that's where it's land. Uh, resolutions. We have resolution 2019-46, city attorney. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Pahokee, Florida, authorizing the city manager to expend the $475,000 provided to the city pursuant to state funded grant agreement contract number G 0V16 for design services for S. Barfield, South Barfield Highway from East Main Street to East 7th Street by effecting payment in 8 to A and E Engineering Inc. for the performance of such services as described in the proposal attached here to as Exhibit A, providing for adoption of representations, providing for an effective date. Thank you, Madam City Attorney. City Manager, at this time, could you give a brief uh, overview of this resolution, a little history on it? Mayor Commission, thank you very much. Mayor, this is your uh, agreement for engineering services for Barfield Highway. Uh, AE Engineering is your uh, engineer on record. Uh, before we move forward with putting 100% plans to uh, Department of Transportation, you have to put your engineer on contract to continue to proceed forward to manage this project. Uh, we are now at about 90% uh, design plans for Barfield Highway. We're going to move aggressively forward to put a bit on the street, hopefully by the end of this year. Uh, let me back up, not the end of this year, but hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days. But your engineer has to come on contract now because we're at that stage where he will now manage this project fully, uh, whoever will win the bid thereafter. Um, again, he is your engineer on record, but you have to put him on contract officially now for this amount to be paid to his firm to manage the project. Um, in this entirety. Thank you, sir. So the commissioners have and have resolution 2018 that's 46 properly read into the minutes and explained. With your pleasure. Uh, I'd like to offer a motion that we accept resolution 2019 that's 46 for our consideration tonight. Second. Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner Everett and properly seconded by Vice Mayor Mervin for the adoption of Resolution 2019-46. Call for questions. I have a couple. Okay. I, I'm, I've read this and I'm very, very confused. Okay, so we're hiring A&E Engineering. That's our engineer who's on contract, correct? Yes, he's your engineer on record for all of your projects. Okay. And then they are hiring Baker Design Build? Yes, that's one of their sub, some designers. Okay. And then under, this stuff is all dated last year. Yes, ma'am. They've been working on this project design just that long. This is a long project. We've been dealing with it for about a year now. We're now at the 100% stage of design plans going to FDOT before we can move forward with a bid. Yes, they've been working on it for that long. Uh, typically highway projects, they do take two to three years sometimes. Um, fortunately, ours has taken right at two years. Um, it's been a long process uh, with, this, with this project. Uh, it's a, an extensive uh, renovation of Barfield Highway. It's not just a repaving, it's a complete tear up and, and, and redesign. So it, it, yes, it, it's taken that long with AEN Engineering to get to this point. But we're at that stage now where we need to uh, move forward aggressively with FDOT to get this project online sooner than later. Okay, so we're going to give the 475 to A&E, and then they're going to hand it out to these different companies yes, to Baker's do these services. For, for some okay, services. so yeah. under this Baker design contract and, and scope of work that I read, uh, under survey it said that they were quoting it at 26000 but on this thing for A&E it says twenty eight. What's the difference? I would have to ask Andy that, that, that question. Okay. Again, that's their subcontractor. Yes. And um, they're actually paying that subcontractor for design. Um, so I would have to ask him that question between his billing or what it costs and what, is, what the estimate is, what Baker is, is providing. But this is his final cost of, of 475 Okay. And then who are doing all this other stuff? If we have the, the contract and, and stuff here from Baker, for the survey and a few other little things, then who does all this other stuff that's on this list that A&E gave us? What other stuff? 
the design estimate, permitting, environmental clearances, drainage calculation, utility clearance and design, geotechnical, FDOT criteria plans, maintenance of traffic, cost estimate. That's Summer Baker and that's Summer A in Engineering. You got to remember, A in Engineering is your that's your master contractor on record, but they do have an opportunity to shop some of these these uh, services out to subcontractors. Okay, so to me, it kind of seems like we're paying double for engineering. This is an engineering proposal no, for no, engineering you're, you're services, paying, paying, and then we have no, an engineer. No, you're paying AE Engineering. They just give you backup to let you know where they give some of their services to assist their firm. You pay AE in Engineering. You're not paying Baker. You're paying AE Engineering. That's the contract. Okay. Baker is just one subsidiary that assists them with some of the services they need to get the design, to get the engineering plans to FDOT, and also do some of uh, the project management. So you're not paying Baker, you're paying AE Engineering, but they provided you additional backup to let you know exactly how they manage this project and who's involved. Okay, but under this contract that they gave us on this page, it doesn't have a page number. But it says, if your contractor or subcontractor fails to pay subcontractors, sub-subcontractors, or material suppliers, those people who are owed money may look to your property for payment, even if you have already paid the contractor in full. Uh, and then it says that that A and E, I guess, is going to be the ones that are going to decide if they've been paid or not. How are we guaranteeing that? Commissioner Boland, we can't guarantee what the master contractor does with his subcontractors. We pay the master contractor. They are allowed to hire any subcontractor that they please. I understand that. We can that. control when, how, where, and at what severity the master contractor pays his subcontractor. That's not our responsibility. It's, but it clearly says on here on paragraph five that they're going to give us a certificate for payment to contractor, but then it says the engineer's certification for payment shall not be a representation that the engineer has made exhaustive or continuous inspections to check the quality or quantity of the work, reviewed construction means, methods, techniques, se sequences, or procedures, reviewed copies of requisitions received from subcontractors, and suppliers and other data requested by the client to substantiate the contractor's right to payment or a certain how or for what purpose the contractor has used money previously paid on account of the contractor's contract sum. Commissioner Bowden, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. If, I, if I could oh. ask the city attorney, uh, city attorney yeah, have somebody you please this help me out here. Efficiency, this Michelle, particular contract? You come. Here's, here, this is the document. Okay. That's what I can explain. You have a contract with Annie, which is providing you with continuous services in the engineering sector. That's not the contract that's before you. You have a contract. It's three years old, and it's still effective. So you don't have to go out each time you need an engineer. So the contract has all the terms, and yes, a subcontractor could put a lien on your property, but the contract with a and &E, the actual contract, provides for a mechanism for us to go against a and &E if a and &E doesn't pay a, a subcontractor. So you have an agreement with a and &E to provide services. You can go against a and &E if there's a problem with a contractor, but a subcontractor, but it's always true. Subcontractors can always put a lien on your property for non-payment in any construction contract. Now, what you're doing today is just saying that th th this is not a contract. It was just his additional, each time you have a work order, each time you need him, you have a main contract that's three years old, but each time you need his services, it has to come back to the city commission in order for, let's say, we call it, let's say a work order to go out and perform the work. So this is what this is. There's $475,000 available that was grant money to go to this specific project, nothing else. And he's presented his $475,000 invoice, which is 
exactly what the grant provided for. And now is the time to start disbursements so that he can do the work. And he has his subs underneath him who will be receiving part of it, but the bulk of it will be for the engineering services he provides himself. Annie, oh. let's call him he, but it's the company. Okay, but I live on Barfield Highway and they're talking about doing a survey and they did it last year in Thanksgiving time, over the Thanksgiving weekend. I really can't tell you whether they did it in the past and they're doing part of it now and some later. What I reviewed was the basic contract terms that permits Annie to do your work and then a separate document that's a work order that matches the amount to be expended that's provided. The details regarding the timing of each work is part of the work. It's something the city manager can tell you whether the survey was done last year, whether it's going to be done this year, and et cetera. But in terms of the work order, I know what the work is that's outlined. It matches the amount of money that the grant provides. And because it is a contractor that was already contracted with the city to provide these exact same services on a continuing basis, legally, it makes legal sense to us. Okay, then I, I have one more question. Where are we getting the 475 from? Fair Commission. In 2017, the city was awarded scout funding for the city of Pahokee. It's an aggressive state project that provides for small counties and cities to receive funding for dilapidated or uh, streets and roads that are in severe uh, deterioration. The city of Pahokee, this administration, was very successful in securing $4.5 million in 2017 and 2018. This road will cost us $4.5 million. The question you asked at budget time, why did our budget go from 4.3 to 8.5? I said then to you, it's because you were awarded $4.5 million for Barfield okay, Highway. Okay, do we have the 475000 Have they given it to us that we're going to give this guy? You're asking about billing now. Okay, here's how billing works with the state for streets projects. They don't give you $475,000 up front. You receive an invoice. That invoice then travels to District 4 in, Tal in, in Fort Lauderdale. It's then processed in Fort Lauderdale at District 4. District 4 then sends that invoice to Tallahassee. Tallahassee then processes it. It goes back to District 4. District 4 sends a check to the city of Pahokee. We pay the contractor. That's how the billing goes for large projects of this. Okay. I guess my concern is I don't want us to have another two hundred and six, one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars $177,000 that we got advanced and then we spent it or it got messed up and then we had to pay it back. So this is not... This is not going to be that, correct? That's our billing process, Commissioner Bowling. Okay, we're going to move on. In, in addition to questions, Harry Nana, you ready for vote? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Everett? Yes. Vice Mayor Mervin? Yes. Commissioner <clears throat> Bowling? Yes. Mayor Babb? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Commissioners. Resolution 2018-46, passed by a unanimous vote. We don't have any public hearings, no proclamation. Well, we have one proclamation, proclamation on and in life and legacy of Mr. Roar E. York. Uh, City Attorney, could you read this into the record? Proclamation honoring the life and legacy of Mr. Royal E. York. Whereas Royal E. York was born on July 22, 1938, and whereas he moved to the city of Pahokee in 1972 and served as scoutmaster of the Boys Scout Troop 628 in Pahokee from 1980 until 1984, and whereas in 1982 Mr. York began his <coughs> political endeavors when he ran for city commission and whereas Mr. York was active in the Pahokee Elks Lodge 1638 until 
it's merging with Bell Glade Lodge 1716. He served one term as exalted ruler after his son's term later in life. Mr. York had a, had a renewed interest in scouting and served on the troop committee for Troop 622 in Belle Glade. And whereas Mr. York served on city advisory boards and was a very active member of the Pahokee Rotary Club preceding his death. And whereas Mr. York was kind to those whom he encountered, it has been said by many that Mr. York knew no strangers, only friends he had not met yet. And whereas on August the 13th, 2019, the Lord called Mr. York home, he leaves to cherish his memory, his beloved family, friends, and dog, Bud. Now, therefore, the City Commission of the City of Pahokee, Florida, do hereby extend heartfelt, condol heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Royal E. York, and hereby honors his life and legacy, done this day of October 2019, Mayor Keith Babb, Jr., Vice Mayor Clara Mervin, Commissioner Regina Bolin, Commissioner Benny Everett, and Commissioner Felicia uh, Hill. Okay. I think we have Mr. York's son here. We're going to ask him to come forward, and we're going to ask the City Commission to come down so we can present him with this uh, proclamation. On behalf of the Pahokee City Commission, myself as Mayor Keith Babb, Vice Mayor Clara Mervin, Commissioner Regina Bolin, Commissioner uh, Everett, Commissioner Felicia Hill, who's absent, along with our city manager, our attorney, our city clerk, and our entire city uh, community. Uh, it's an honor to present you on behalf of this commission with this proclamation honoring Mr. Roy E. York. Uh, he was an outstanding uh, citizen in our community. I can remember the time when he brought the circus to Pahokee. He had asked all the commissioners to be the honor honorary, uh, honorary uh, ringleader, and which was a great honor to us. Uh, he brought students from uh, Notre Dame down to do community service every year. Just a very active person, as this proclamation stated. He ran for city commission. He supported candidates who he thought would do a great job for the city. So on our behalf, it gives me an honor as mayor of this city, on behalf of this commission, to present you and your family member with this proclamation. I don't know if you would like to say a word or two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. York, uh, he's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good proclamation we gave him. Uh, you know, he, was a good, he, was a, he was a good man. Um, so, you know, he's a major loss to this community. The sad part about it is, you know, his, 
the family's leaving Pahokee. Mm -hmm. um, the mom has already been relocated to Georgia. Uh, the son's just sort of here right now, uh, trying to tie up loose ends. Uh, when he's done, um, he'll be leaving as well. So um, you'll be losing, you know, the entire family. You know, uh, in a few weeks, he'll be he'll be moving as well. So um, it's I guess it'll be a void, you know, around City Hall because my dad dog was he uses the restroom on our grass at City Hall. So you're gonna miss that <laughs> at, at, at City Hall. But um, Mr. York was a good guy. Um, he would always speak every day. Um, he would always he's very observant of what was going on in this city. And um, so it's, uh, it's going to be, you know, a big loss for us at City Hall. We're just so used to him being there, you know, every morning, afternoon, in the, in the days we see him. So, um, but, you know, uh, losing a good family, uh, unfortunately, they'll be relocating. So um, thank you very much for that proclamation, too. Thank Here's you. Mr. Mayor, is there, any, is there any family connection with uh, the naming of the library with that family? Oh, okay. oh, right. It's a good point. I didn't. Okay, thank you. Now we would. Uh, well, we already have the Glaze Regional presentation. Now we'll move into the uh, mayor's report. Uh, I, I wanted to show the uh, presentation that we as this commission had completed uh, a couple of months back, just to kind of remind our residents of some of the outstanding work that this commission have completed in the last few years. Uh, just as a reminder, it's on Facebook. We all go on Facebook. I hope that sometime uh, you review that. Uh, but like anything else, you know, there's a saying you know, what have you done for me lately uh, always seemed to be the most favorable trend. Uh, but all I can say is this commission has worked hard in improving the conditions of this city. I believe the city manager, our current uh, city attorney, our staff, everybody that's part of this administration have a desire to improve this city and to try to move it forward. Every citizen here has a right to their opinion, uh, but we need to be a little more cordial with peoples, uh, but we understand some frustration. I was elected the mayor of the city of Pahokee for all the residents, not just a select few. And I tried to do that. The decision that I make and the vote that I make it's only for one purpose and one cause, and that is, in my opinion, to move our city forward, to make the best decision that I can make. We're five individuals. We have five different opinions. We have five different thought patterns. It always been that way. I think that's why the charter elect five commissioners, and the majority normally is a prevailing body to move things forward. It takes three individuals, you know, no matter how talented we all are as individually, it's going to take the majority of us to make a decision to move this city forward. And there are going to be decisions that we may not disagree or agree with, but we have to live with them and move on and continue to work. And we can't take it personally. I've been here for a long time. All my life I've lived it in Pahokee. I've been a commissioner probably longer, not probably, longer than any other person in this city, in the Glaze region, to be uh, factual. I don't, I'm not always perfect, but I try my best to do what is right. I've never been accused of anything unethical, illegal, and I can't control what's on Facebook or what people say. I can only control the things I can control. And that is a desire, a strong desire to move our city forward. 
And I'm going to talk about a few things that we have done that we sometimes even get criticized. I'm going I'm, I'm to list it. Number one is the football field. $800,000 that our surtax money has to pay for that. <coughs> Could we use that money in a more efficient way? Evidently, three commissioners thought at that time that was a good utilization of those dollars. You talk about the looks on those young children's face when they're out there utilizing that field. It's, it's priceless. And then we have a division in this community pitting the commission and the black community against the Hispanic because someone feels that they're being discriminated. It's no field in Palm Beach County, no official field that I'm aware of that's open any time in any day that anyone can use. Most activities although they are paid by taxpayer dollars are supported by a charge and a cost associated with it. Palm Beach County own and operate Canal Point Community Center. Your taxpayer dollars pay for that. I beg your pardon if any of you all or any person here can go and ask Palm Beach County, I'm having a family reunion, I'm having a gathering, and I want to use that facility without any costs associated with it. We have worked very hard with the Hispanic community to make some sort of an agreement that they'll be able to utilize that football field against even our city manager recommendation. He understands we understand that it's something that we can do, although we are really waving into an unknown territory. We're opening up something that possibly other organizations can come back and say, why can't we uh, do that? But we have made some provision to bring that lead into our city operated program. So that would solve that, uh, hopefully. But let's talk about some of the things we have done in the five years that I've been here as, as mayor and this, most of these commissions that have been here. Uh, the, the marina, we're criticized for the marina, the timeliness of it, and it, it may be a valid criticism, but that marina contract has been setting on the governor's desk for the governor and the cabinet to vote on it. It's been out of our hand for a long time. Things are slow. The process is sometimes slow. Let's talk about the, 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 the funding that we have provided for that marina. Just recently, $1.2 million renovation completed. Anyone with common sense to look at that marina and know it's a better place than what it's been for years. In addition to that 1.2 million, we received $900,000 to, to, to continue phase two of the marina, which is near uh, at the end of it completion. We have spent a lot of resources and time there, which we should, because it's a valuable asset to this community. 75% of our roads and streets in the city of Pahokee has been paved or repaved. That's just unheard of, but we have done it. I mean, we have made some major improvement. You take uh, East Main Street, the street right across from the Pahokee Elementary School, $3.5 million, completely, totally reconstructed. We spent $550,000 on Commissioner Park, new playground equipment, new basketball court, there's tennis court. That's for our youth. That's where families can come out and enjoy those amenities that other cities have. 
I mean, the list go on and on and on. We talk about Barfield Highway going through our main corridor. That's a $4.5 million project that the city secured from the state. That project was in, this, in the hands of the state for about a year now. It haven't been completed, haven't yet started, but it's nearing that point. We don't hold the money. We're not actually gonna be doing the project. I'm just mentioning that to share that a lot of these projects sometimes takes a year or two to materialize. So I ask you, and I'm not trying to compare us with anyone else, but you look at the five years, the last five years here at the city of Pahokee and compare it with the best five years that you may be able to recall in the last 20 years, and just gonna compare the two five years together. And you will see that this commission has really moved this city forward. Do we deserve the criticism that we're getting? We can't change that. That's, that's, that's fine. But in comparison, in comparison, there are some uh, comments about ethical violation or sh sunshine law violation. I never heard so much criticism. I'm going to go back in the past just briefly. There was a commission that came on board and they fired the city manager the first day of business that that commission was hired or was elected. No one, without any comment, they just fired him and asked him to be escorted from the building. Some of the same critics never spoke on that. Never, at least in public, never say that the commission got together and made that decision outside the chamber. As Ms. Weeks have stated, another criticism is that this commission, everyone is aware that our previous city attorney was terminated and it was by a majority vote. I never met this lady. She stated that none of us prior to that meeting with the exception of the vice mayor had ever even spoken to her. But we are being accused sometime of violating the Sunshine Law, even to that regard. I would tell anyone, if you feel that this commission or any commission have violated Sunshine Law, you have evidence of that, report it. Say on this day, at this time, these commissioners have taught, and this was the subject matter that came before the commission for a vote. You should report it. Any unethical violation that you know of, and you have evidence of, please, as mayor, I encourage you to report it. That's your duty, that's your job. But don't use these thoughts that may be wrongdoing and you put it out. As again, I can't control what you put on Facebook, but all I can tell you is other folks that's interested in coming to Pahokee, they see that and it gives the community as well as the commission a negative view in the community. But we're gonna continue as mayor, I'm going to continue to make the best decisions that I can. And I'm not asking you to always agree with it. You know, no one agree with everything. But I will work hard, and I can say that I still respect each individual here and in this community. And you're entitled to your opinions and we're going to continue to work on your behalf and i'm going to speak just briefly and i know we're going to be revolting on this we, we talked about the ordinance and how bad it is and there are similar ordinances that's out there to help commissions meeting run more efficient we're not here to camp out and be here forever and we're not here to shine 
our responsibility and try to rush out the door. I was at South Bay meeting just last week. They was there for 45 minutes. And I'm not comparing us with South Bay and saying we need to watch the clock and meet only 45 minutes, but in a reasonable time. Citizens have an opportunity now at the beginning of our meeting to speak on any subject, whether it's agenda items or non-agenda items. You don't have to wait. You don't have to be here all night if you choose not to. So most of those ordinances and most of those outlines in here is just to help us run our commission meeting smoothly. And everything in there we don't all agree with and things that we don't, we can discuss that and remove it or adjust it and, and make some changes to it. It's not a dictatorship. It's not to silence one individual commission or two individual commissioners. It's not to silence the community because you have the right to speak on your subject matter that you want. It's to make our operation smoother. You still have access to each commissioners prior to meeting, talk to them, call them. But this commission meeting is to conduct business of the city to move this city forward. And I thank you for your time and listening to that mayor's report and that presentation. Now we'll move to the city manager report. Thank you, Mayor, Commission. Uh, residents, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, visitors, if you're here, still here, thanks for coming in and uh, spending some time with us this evening. Uh, sometimes we can get a little long, so we apologize for that. Uh, Mayor, thank you for uh, just reminding me uh, <laughs> why I came to Pahokee. Um, uh, th there are a lot of uh, milestones here uh, that we've achieved. Um, and I'm going to add to that tonight because uh, I came a little aggressive. Um, with a different mindset, and I'm still in that mindset um, because I've been doing it a lot for four years. Through all of those accomplishments that you've named, this administration has endured a lot. Um, and sometimes it's been very uncomfortable, um, but that's the part of the job. Uh, one thing about local government, I've been in it for quite some time, and I expect, you know, the rough roads with the smooth ones as well. So uh, you just have to compensate for the course. Um, and so uh, I think I'm very good at that. But uh, I'm going to add. I'm going to add to your accomplishments that you that you uh, stated earlier over the last four years. Uh, the city of Pahokee was very um, proficient in researching opportunities for uh, increasing our capacity to serve this community. Um, one of those recently uh, came to um, an award. Uh, so, uh, as you could, I guess you could say to the city of Pahokee, we were awarded. Um, a new transportation bus by the U.S. Department of Transportation um, on September 27th. They delivered that bus here to Pahokee Parks and Recreation. Um, that bus is valued at about $135,000 um, by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um, we only had to pay $10,000 for the handicap equipment that's on that bus. So to the staff uh, in the Department of Community Economic Development, um, some are no longer with us. Uh, they were part of that um, grant um, submission. Um, and so we're very excited to have uh, that fleet, uh, that vehicle in our fleet. It provides the capacity to do uh, additional uh, services to seniors, of course, additional trips uh, in, uh, in, a many, in many areas in parks and recreation. So that's $135,000 um, that uh, we didn't have to spend out of our own pockets for additional transportation um, here in the city of Pahokee. Uh, in addition to that, um, Mayor, I've spoken with you directly about uh, a venture that I've been working on for the old hospital. Um, I'm still not going to release that information. Uh, sometimes uh, when you're working with uh, a private investor, uh, it's important that you are clear about your objectives and you're clear about the end game that you're trying to achieve. Um, but I will say, um, Mayor, Commission, and community, that we have moved aggressively forward uh, with the old hospital for a plan that I think that everyone would be pleased with. Uh, I'm not prepared to present uh, 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 an agreement to the city uh, commission as of yet. Uh, I want to uh, meet with uh, the organization on tomorrow here in Pahokee uh, to get some additional information that I think will be 
imperative before I uh, release site control to this organization. I will release site control uh, to this developer. Uh, I've seen their work. Uh, they've done it nationally. Um, they're supported by the federal government. Um, and so I am going to release site control with, to this organization, but I, I want to uh, have another conversation uh, about what uh, the project will, will look like for the city of Pahokee. And subsequently, when we get presentations in the city of Pahokee, and it's a private, public-private partnership, it's very important that uh, we do our due diligence and look at you know financial portfolios, who has the capability of, of carrying out the promises that they're, they're being presented with. Um, I can assure you um, this private venture is already funded uh, by the federal government. Um, I actually saw the award letter for myself, uh, but again, I'm not ready to have um, the public fluid conversation uh, because I want to ensure that uh, we don't stumble again like we have in the past on the old hospital here in Pahokee. Uh, and when I feel comfortable, uh, I will pull in our legal uh, uh, firm so they can review where we're going uh, with, this, with this project. Uh, but it's something that I think this entire community will be proud of. Uh, they will be excited about. And I'm, I'm tickled to death about it because I think as Barfield Highway is going to be getting renovations, so will the old hospital at the same time. So that's going to be a significant, you know, change in the landscape uh, on Barfield Highway uh, for the street and road itself and also for that property that's owned by the city of Pahokee. So, um, and that's great news uh, for the city of Pahokee, but it's something that, Mayor, you, you and I, you was with me when I, when I met the investor, when I met the developer um, that, that moved very quickly once they came to Pahokee. Um, and so we're excited about it, but we're not ready to release all the information yet because there are some additional things that we have to ensure are in place uh, before uh, we release site control to this, to this organization. Um, but you'll be very proud of what the, uh, uh, the conclusion will be for the corridor in that area of Barfield Highway. So um, hopefully, um, hopefully by next spring, you know, uh, we'll see a difference uh, occurring over there on Barfield Highway. But again, it's, it's something that I have to continue working with uh, this organization <coughs> on to ensure that we don't stumble as we have in the past. And we have stumbled before on this location, on this, on this property owned by the city of Pahokee. So we just want to make sure everything is uh, where, I, where the city uh, wants it to be as far as um, what, we're ex what we're expecting, uh, the capabilities of this organization who have a long, long, long history of development uh, uh, in, in municipalities by using, using uh, alternative funds uh, through the government, U.S. government, by the way. So I'm excited about that. Um, Can we ask what you mean by site control, release huh? and site control? Uh, they'll, they'll be able to come on and, and do some uh, preliminary reviews of the structure, uh, get some ideas of um, what their development uh, um, portfolio should look like as far as the amount of money they need to put into the project to either um, build certain structures, uh, demolishment, uh, all those preliminary things that go into having site control over a particular piece of land that they're, they're, that they're planning to take over. Um, it, it pretty much gives them the, the, the authority to start drawing up their developmental plans for the property. Um, they've already secured the funding actually for the property, to be honest with you. Um, they've already rent the application and it was already funded uh, through the federal government. I can't release that. Um, and so uh, when you have an entity like that, that is uh, aggressively moving forward uh, on your behalf and they have their own financial funding, uh, uh, it, it, it makes the landscape a little easier um, to move. It, it makes the path easier for the city to make a decision about what the development should be as far as, you know, selling the property to them. We will sell it. So, but again, we got to put some things in perspective first. And I want to make sure that before we come back to this commission and, 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 and present it, that everything is, is sort of in order. And eventually it'll move over to our, our, our city attorney for their, for their review uh, before we bring it back to the commission. But there are some things that they want to move forward with now because they've already received funding for the location. So that's, that, that's the short end of the story right now. Um, when I first engaged them, I didn't know how aggressive they were going to move with their funding um, 
uh, opportunities that were being presented to them. But they were actually, they were skilled in this. They've done it for many years. And so um, that's how they were able to secure the funding for this future project here in the Pahokee. And if I could add to then just that, just briefly, uh, on yesterday I spoke with uh, uh, Richard Williams, who's the father of uh, Serena and Venus Williams, and he's looking at uh, trying to do some things in Pahokee to give back. His daughters at a young age and himself came to Pahokee, and they, they made some type of uh, contribution and donations uh, to some programs, but he want to have a more positive impact. One of the uh, areas he looked at was the old uh, hospital, and I'm prayerful that what you're doing going to go through, but as a backup plan, there are some interests also uh, in that. In addition, he's looking at housing creation, uh, economic development through businesses, and uh, other avenues so that's 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 positive very positive and just last i want to say this because i missed this in, in in sports when fans are booing booing the team the best way to stop the booing is to win games so this commission is dedicated to winning games and moving our city forward. And when constituents complain, the best way to stop their complaint is to move the city forward, to bring businesses, jobs, and housing. And that's why we was elected. Thank you. Mayor, finally, um, I've been in communication with the state as far as our leases with the uh, marina. Um, they are moving forward. Now that we've gotten past the uh, 35 acres, um, and they released that restriction to the city of Pahokee, um, they're now focusing uh, all of their energy on uh, the marina, uh, upcoming uh, decision about um, the three, the, the, lease, the lease for um, a particular entity that we're, that's, that we're hoping to uh, partnership with. Uh, they have provided um, a date of November. They reviewed it for October and they, they held on to it um, and they're going to bring it back in November uh, for that uh, board decision uh, with the governor and cabinet. Uh, they have provided um, uh, a timeline of if you want to uh, provide any additional language or any different additional changes. Uh, they've asked that three times um, because they've looked at the leases um, and they just want to make sure that the commission uh, wants what was presented uh, in resolution 2018-15. Um, if you're still with those stipulations and that language, uh, if you are, everything stays the same. If you want to make changes, uh, improve uh, the lease uh, language, et cetera, uh, the, um, the, the, the fee scale um, of the first year, second year, and then the third, fourth, fifth year, 5%, you know, you have that opportunity now, between now and probably the third week, the fourth week of October, to, to present or give some additional changes uh, to what they'll ultimately put in their package. Um, so um, I'm giving it to the commission that you have an opportunity um, at this time uh, moving forward uh, to make uh, any final changes. Um, uh, to move forward with these leases as is, or any other uh, pleasure that you have on these leases before they get before the governor and cabinet in November. Um, uh, city didn't delay that. Um, they just made a decision that they wanted to go through this, you know, thoroughly to ensure that what they were doing is sufficient and also to come back to the city and present. They looked really closely at that fee scale um, and, and, they, and they had some questions about it. Um, uh, and, and they want to ensure that, they, that the commission uh, understands what they are agreeing to um, before it goes to the, to the, to the governor and cabinet. And they back that, like I said, three times now. So uh, they want you to diligently take a look at the fee scale uh, in these leases and look at every other uh, 
uh, part of that resolution. And if the resolution is going to change, of course, we have to give them a different resolution um, before before November. So I just want to present that to you. Um, and if there is some type of uh, additional revisions that you want to see, you want to make, uh, whatever your pleasure may be, that's your choice. I'm just telling you the state is giving you that opportunity as they move forward on their responsibilities of putting the package together. Um, they, you know, put that to me uh, as an opportunity, you know, because they're getting, now they're down to uh, building the package and, and, and having it prepared for November. They're not going any further, uh, I think, than, than the second week of November on this. They'll be presented to the cabinet. So you have an opportunity to um, clarify everything that you uh, presented to them uh, previously in that resolution and at least. So. I, I think if we're going to make any recommendations or changes that prior to that we would need, I would think a workshop to look over the uh, fee schedule, to look over the actual contract and see if there's anything that we would like. I, I don't know how we can even consider making a change at this point without having it in front of us, without reviewing it, and without even getting a staff recommendation of what they feel changes need to be made, if any changes need right. to be made. Right. Right. Correct. Correct. Mr. I wasn't Mayor. talking tonight. Right. <laughs> That's just my city manager's report. Right. Okay. Uh, Mr. I, wasn't, Mayor. I wasn't talking anything tonight. I, I, was just I really feel that. that that's not fair. That's not decent of us. This company has been here for three years waiting on us to get this together. And I don't think making a change or changing anything at this point that holds this up even a day is, is even close to being the right thing to do at this point. Okay. I think we need to move that forward and get it done. I just want to clear this up. This is not coming directly from the city manager. This is coming from the state axing this commission. Oh, I know. If there's anything you want to look at and change, We've had three years to look out, at it, um, though. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do it, but it's just our well, obligation but to you're review suggesting it. a workshop and then that's yeah, because I say things. if you if you listen closer to what I say if we are considering making any changes in order to do it we would need a workshop to have it in our face so we can review it and discuss it I'm not saying advocating one way or the other for it I just say if we decided that that's the route we want to take that's what we need to do Commissioner Everett, I think you wanted to. Uh, no, no, not at this time. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Babb, I remember um, when the former attorney was here, we had suggested some changes. We never really got a copy of that uh, lease agreement changes that was made. So is there a way that we can get a copy of, of that? Because we don't know what the changes was made because we, uh, we don't even have a copy of it. There was one night. Yeah, there were some made that night, night when he was here because we um, have a draft. Mayor, we all yes, have sir. a draft. Mayor, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, I think even Mr. Brandenburg himself had made some changes in the um, in the lease. But okay. either way it goes, we have a commission talking. I'm I'm hearing a lot of echo. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm, I'm just asking. Either way okay. it goes, if we can just get a copy of the lease because we don't have a copy of it, so we can know, you know, what we know what's been said in the lease, but we don't have written copies of the lease. Mayor, Mayor Commission, and um, I asked the state to give me a copy of what was forwarded to them. They sent me a draft. Uh, so whenever the commission decides, and I'll give that, I'll forward that between now and tomorrow morning. So if the commission wants to come back uh, and look at those, that, that lease, that's, that's your pleasure. But I do have a copy of what was forwarded to the state. Again, we can have a workshop, we can have a special meeting, it's just up to the commission if that's your choice, if that's what you feel you would like to do to look at it. If not, then we, we just move forward. It's, it's up to the commission. Uh, maybe once you get the actual contract, by reading it, you may want to decide from there, let's have a, some type of workshop or meeting. If not, then it well, will. Well, another thing on that, Mayor, you know, we have some uh, display, but we, um, with that, 
we want to put on record is not the city of Pahoka that held up the signing and approval of the leases. We have nothing to do with it for it going to the state. So we want, I know we have people say, oh, well, it's y'all the one holding it back. That, that's, that's, not, that's not the truth. So we want to put on record. It's not the, the commissioners that are holding the lease back from being signed through um, Tallahassee. That, that's, that's not on us. But we do have to make, as they said in everything, diligent and look over the lease and make sure everything is correct. Not just for one side, but for the whole community on uh, is it is it because we have we have lately have had some questions that came to the commission that you know that that that's something that they would like to address about this about the lease. We have, we, have, we have had questions from the community that um, that would like to ask questions. So I think the workshop will, will be good. Mr. City Manager, yes, did we send a, a lease to the state that wasn't signed? No, yeah, yeah, because that lease wasn't it wasn't executed because of course you had to wait. No, I'm before. asking if we didn't sign it. No, no, you sent a, our, our former legal firm sent a draft of what we decided should be in that lease that went to the state and it was held there until it goes to the governing cabinet. And, and then, it was signed by the commission. What was signed by the commission? The lease. No. There was no, mm -hmm. we revised all of our leases and then we sent a new draft to Tallahassee, okay? With that draft went the resolution that's been sitting in Tallahassee until the governor and cabinet gets it. Once they decide that you can provide for multiple leases, arena, restaurant, campground, camp, campground, that can be executed by this city commission. You can't do it until Tallahassee says yes. You can't execute three leases until Tallahassee gives their approval for you to execute three leases. So it has to come back, the lease that we write for execution. We can't execute anything. We can't sign anything. We can't put it in the law. It's just a proposal to Tallahassee to allow an entity to sublease from us. We can't execute that until Tallahassee says yes. And all they're saying now is before we say yes or say no or whatever, that this is your final opportunity for any recommendations or changes you want to make. That's what they're saying. If, if there are any at all, that's all they're saying. You know, it's just, they're going to ask that question anyway. So, um, Mayor, Mayor. So that's, that's, that's all Tallahassee is saying right now. You know, we can't execute uh, those leases until they say yes. They got a draft lease that we formulated say what? and they took information from that lease and they put it into their package and now they're just asking questions and they're going through their due diligence and they're vetting and they're coming back to the city and saying, hey, is this what you want? Okay, great. We're going to put everything in the package. If there's no other changes, there are no uh, additions, That's deletions it. or whatever, we're moving forward. That's all they're saying. That's all they're saying. And naturally, they would say that anyway before they present it to the governing cabinet because they want to be correct as well. You got a staff that's working in Tallahassee as well as you got a staff working on this as well. And everybody wants to be on the same page. And everybody wants to ensure that when this is done, that it's something that we all can live with and we can be very successful regardless of who the entity is going to be. Okay, so them that's going through their at, at this point, the city manager will forward a copy of that lease agreement to each of the commission. We'll look at it, review it. And in the interim, if we feel based on that document that we recommend or feel some changes need to be made or addressed, then either I will call a special meeting or we would have a workshop. But I need to get your input through the city clerk whether or not a meeting is desired by us to move forward. And that's the quickest route I can see that we can uh, do, do move you, forward. Do you want to get this tomorrow so you can review it. So yes, can absolutely. It oh, okay, as soon as great. we can get it is hopefully tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Good. Again, uh, that's just a recommendation. It's, you okay. know, uh, city uh, manager is not saying, hey, go over here and make this change right here. I'm not saying that. I'm saying Tallahassee is saying, if this is your final uh, support for all of these three leases, fine. We're going to move forward. We're going to prepare the package. We're going to be done with it. That's it. That's a conclusion. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Now we'll move to old business. On the old business, we have Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Ma'am, I'm sorry. City City City. <laughs> okay. Um, I have an announcement um, of a of a notice of an executive session that I'm seeking um, approval for at approximately six six o'clock on Tuesday, October the 22nd, or as soon thereafter as may be heard. The um, I'm asking the city commission uh, meet. Um, I meet with you all privately as an executive session to discuss pending litigation pursuant to section 286.0118 Florida statutes for the following case, Okeechobee, Okeechobee Land Company, Inc. versus City of Pahokee, Florida, and it is court case number 50-2018-CA. And um, the people who will be at the commission meeting as required by Florida statutes to announce would be Commissioner Bolin, Commissioner Everett, Commissioner Hill, Vice Mayor Mervin, and Mayor Babb, uh, City Manager Chandler Williamson, City Attorney Bernadette Norris Weeks, Assistant City Attorney Michelle Austin Pammies, and a certified court reporter. The estimated length of the attorney client session will be approximately 30 minutes, and I would ask that we be able to set this on um, Tuesday, October 22nd at 6 p.m. Attorney Weeks, I'll be in Washington on October 22nd. That's not a problem. One commission now. Oh, it, we we could we could move it. Um, there are. Um, um, I was. We we could move it to the following meeting. Yes, ma'am. Um, and that would be. City clerk. The first Tuesday in November. I'm sorry. The second Tuesday in November, and I don't have that date. Let's look November twelfth. November twelfth. Okay. If that would be um, allowable, I would like to. Set it for that date, November the 12th at 6 p.m. Okay. Okay. So we, need we need a motion for that. So we agree to vote. Um, November day. Yes, November twelfth. You you don't need a motion, okay. um, Mr. Mayor. You can we can just calendar it if there's a consensus okay, of that date. All right. Okay. And just for the audience, uh, executive session is a meeting between our legal uh, staff and this commission. It won't be uh, in public. It will be recorded and reviewed. And once this case is settled, all the uh, minutes and the trans. Uh, of that meeting will be public for your review. Okay. So mainly doing lawsuit litigations and all that. Just. Yeah, there is one other um, issue, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about what the ordinance, um, 2019-02, says and doesn't say, and. Uh, during old business, I would very much like the opportunity to go over it. It was hard to do it by phone at the right. last meeting and summarize it. So it may have been, um, you know, maybe a good thing that um, there was a um, there was a notice issue, <laughs> okay. um, so that um, we can have an opportunity to go through it and you all can understand what it is that will come before you at the following meeting. Okay. I'm sorry, you said there was a, a notice issue. What was the notice issue? You'll have to talk with the city clerk. Um, the notice issue is that it has to be advertised for second reading, which is a public hearing. So um, Palm Beach Post has their deadlines. We didn't meet it. It was the next day after the meeting. So this is not going to be second reading? Today is not the second meeting. Okay. I'm sorry, second reading, yeah. but Thank we are you. fine. Yeah. So it's been placed on the old business just for possible discussion and more question if need to uh, so at this time we'll move are you complete with your yes, sir. thank you ma'am so at this time we'll move to our old business we have ordinance 2019-02 uh, at this point we'll turn this over to the city attorney to kind of give us an overview of this particular ordinance Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Commissioners. Um, I won't read the title since this is not a public hearing, but I would like to go through it. And I think all of you have the ordinance in front of you. Um, on the first page, it's simply just stating what it is, the whereas clause uh, and clauses and uh, in section one. 
And this is a section um, just generally about section one about decorum and uh, ground rules for decorum and what will be expected for the quorum. You all have um, currently just some very light language in some what's called rules of procedure in your current ordinance. But I don't know if it, um, well, it does not, in my opinion, go far enough with how you might treat each other, how the public might be treated, how, um, and, and, and this is, this is, you will see this language that's set forth in this section in many, many um, um, ordinances. If you go into um, the, the, any of the uh, code provisions that keep the city codes, that it's very um, common that there are rules of procedures that are set forth. And so just to kind of um, go forward, there, the procedures and scope, um, it talks generally about the city of Pahokee uh, is permitted by Florida law to determine its own rules of procedure, which it is, and that's what you're doing now. Uh, this is broad, under your broad home rule authority to be able to uh, craft your rules as long as those rules don't violate Florida statutes, and they do not. Um, in terms of an agenda, um, this, the agenda, unless otherwise set forth, um, shall be agreed upon by a majority vote, which is what you do right now with your agendas. And the city manager and um, the city attorney, as um, is the case right now, uh, can agenda an item for discussion. And that happens and that can happen right now. Um, the duties and responsibilities of the mayor, these are some general things that are Robert's Rules type of things under duties and responsibilities. It just basically states things about um, recognizing all of you, making sure that he's giving everybody an opportunity to speak, to discuss issues, um, not to the unreasonably delay recognition of any of you want to speak. Um, just very um, similar not even similar, but really exactly the kind of things he's doing right now, but it's set forth in your ordinance so that it's very clear and you understand um, what your, you know, what your, uh, really your rights and duties of commissioners are with respect to the, any presiding officer. And um, one of the, of the things I want to point out that a lot of times what happens if there is a very controversial issue uh, that is lost on a vote because there's not a majority, you may have someone bring that issue up and it's a contentious, controversial issue. So what a lot of city, cities do to curtail um, issues from being reintroduced that are um, contentious and have already been um, voted down for lack of a second is you have to wait a period of time to reintroduce that issue. And so in this case, it would be um, a period of three months if an issue fails. Um, however, if there is it, um, some it, um, information that was not known at the time, that issue could be brought back uh, sooner or an emergency or something like that. And uh, one of the other things um, that you may want to be aware of is time of the meetings, and this has come up before, um, and you know, obviously you can move these times if you find that this is not enough time, but um, many commissions, and even in some charters, they will have the time period upon which um, meetings would have to end. And um, that's totally within the purview of the commission because your charter does not speak to it. And because your charter doesn't speak to it, you can actually set your own rules with when you, your meetings should appropriately end. So this is just suggested language, but you all can make it anything you want. You can make it um, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or whatever you want it to make it. But basically, um, the time of meetings here, it would, um, you know, set forth a specific time to end and begin at 6.30 and end no later than 9 p.m. Um, the City Commission discussions, these are just um, typical things that you will find in Robert's Rules. Um, and it, uh, things like each commission, um, each member of the City Commission and the public who desire to speak um, shall address the mayor or the presiding officer and then be recognized. And, and these are the kind of, not to interrupt anybody who has the floor. Um, and in this case, it also goes further and talks about while the City Commission is in session, um, members of the City Commission and the public present at the meeting shall not uh, be in conversation or otherwise delay or interrupt the proceedings. And it really talks about the peace that should be afforded to the, your City Commission meetings, um, not just for yourselves, but also from outbursts from the public. 
um, there are a, um, provisions for citizens' rights, um, citizens being um, allowed to be heard and speak. Um, currently, you have three minutes, and that's what is set forth in this ordinance. Um, citizen that a member may be heard, member from the public may be heard for a period of three minutes, and this. Um, this right does not apply to an official act um, that must be taken to deal with an emergency situation. It doesn't involve a ministerial act, including but not limited to um, ceremonial proclamations, and it doesn't include um, issues that are exempt by 286.011, um, such as the executive session. Um, and, um, and it doesn't include quasi-judicial hearings. So, but all in all other cases, if a member um, comes and presents themselves, a member of the public, uh, prior to 6.35 p.m., that member um, will be uh, given an opportunity to speak on any issue on the agenda. And that is, um, this actually gives a grace period almost because what a lot of commissions do is they will have at the start of the meeting, like if the meeting starts at seven, the public has to come and sign in by seven. This, because I, I knew it might be uh, controversial, perhaps um, from some members of the public, um, my suggestion was to make it 635 so people do have time, but you could certainly make it a longer period of time in your discretion. Um, also, um, it goes into personal or slanderous remarks that are made. Um, this is just standard language that you'll find in a lot of rules of procedure that any person making personal um, impertinent or slanderous marks um, who shall become boisterous while addressing the commission may be requested to leave the meeting and may um, at that meeting not be, be ejected from that meeting and not be able to come back for that meeting. And so these are things that certainly right now the mayor has the um, authority uh, to implement. However, this legislation makes it clear in writing that these are the rules that you will proceed by. And in special meetings, as currently is the case, the meetings are called solely for a specific purpose that's stated um, on the agenda, and that is standard for special meetings, which is one of the things you comply with right now. Um, uh, certainly your quorum is still the majority of the commission meetings who, commission members who are present at a meeting. However, on this, um, this is some standard language that you may consider um, to implement or not. Um, in if a commission member misses um, three consecutive meetings or four total meetings during a fiscal year, um, that can be um, considered grounds for uh, removal. Um, some commissions um, have some provisions where they have, it has to be um, stated or they have to get, um, have a good cause or something like that. So if you didn't want it to be as stringent, you could certainly have some good cause um, language in here that would address that. But that's something for your consideration. Um, additionally, this talks about your compensation and expense allowance. This comes right out of language that you already have in your ordinance and it talks about the amount of compensation. So this, the, the section two that you see here is exactly what you have right now. Um, in section three, in terms of attendance um, of meetings by telephone or other electronic means, this basically makes it clear that you can attend by telephone if there are two other meetings, at I mean two other members present at least, and, um, and then that third uh, member can have, uh, be counted for a quorum if, if in fact um, you have two other me uh, members who are present. Um, it also goes into um, stating that it's not just for convenience that somebody would appear by telephone, but rather it would be um, in the in, in cases where you know there is a, a real um, emergency or reason for the person not to be present. Section four outlines the order of business and um, the biggest issue here, there are two issues that you should be co uh, concerned with or familiar with, and that is the public participation section would be like most other um, commission agendas at the very beginning of the meeting as opposed to uh, the end of the meeting. What happens and what I've observed um, in your meetings is when the public comes up at the very end of the meeting, it turns into another meeting. And so you may uh, want to streamline your meeting by having everybody speak on anything they want to at one time on the agenda so they're not limited and I think like the mayor said earlier people don't have to stay the entire meeting in order to um, speak if they have a particular concern on a particular issue and they can also speak and the good thing about this is they can speak before issues are actually considered so the way that you have it um, 
now, um, there may be issues that um, you have voted on, and then the public will come up to speak on something, but it's really too late. So this actually gives them more rights um, in terms of their um, being able to get their um, message and point across and let you know what their concerns are prior to votes. Um, still, again, it would be three minutes uh, still. And also on... Um, one of the things that you may want to be um, aware of, there will be a future, uh, if you pass this, a future agenda items area on the agenda. So if particular commissioners have issues that they want to bring before the commission, it will be a way for staff to prepare for the item. So um, it wouldn't be a thing where you're putting the manager on the spot. You would actually have it as an agenda item on the very next agenda where the manager would need to bring forth certain issues and it will be voted upon. And if there's enough um, um, uh, interest in it, then it will go forward. One of the things that this prevents, especially in um, in some cities, is you have where you have a small staff. Is you have commissioners asking staff to do things that maybe the commission would not approve or agree upon if they all knew that this was taking place. And so, if you're able to bring forth items and have the manager work on things that you all agree on um, as a future agenda item to prepare for that item then it helps to um, better um, have your staff prepared for the issue and also it helps to um, put you in a position where um, you're, you're actually dealing with the issues that all of you agree on. And so it, it generally, once it starts going, it doesn't take long to do that, but that's something you could either take out or keep um, depending on um, what, you, what you want to do. Um, another thing um, you may want to um, request for re readily available information. So a thing that's already required by Florida statutes is um, the city manager, city staff, if there is information that citizens are requested in term, requesting in terms of information, public records, that information has to be provided. That is Florida law. So that is just really outlined here so it's clear and it's something that is a part of uh, your public records. Um, and speaking of public records, section eight, um, deals with the same thing, what a public record is, and that, um, and that um, you know, things that need to be um, brought forward, um, they, they, they should be. One of the things that um, in Section 9, um, uh, another, another section dealing with some public records, and it talks about the clerk being designated as the custodian of records. Florida statutes... Um, um, changed a few years ago where you actually have to have in your lobby and, and in clear form who your custodian is of public records. And here is the clerk um, of your city. And, um, and it also talks about if you get uh, some document or something sent to you that you have, uh, we, we would have um, 72 hours in order to present the information, whatever it is, if it's involving city business to the clerk so that if she were um, given um, a public records request, that information would be housed with the clerk and could be provided. You could take that out. You could not have that. That's just something for you to consider that is in um, many uh, rules of procedure dealing with cities. Um, also, inspection by city. This is just standard language that obviously this, the public has an opportunity um, and an obligation and a duty. Um, it, 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 well, the city has a duty and an obligation to produce um, and allow citizens to inspect uh, records that are public. Um, another thing that you may want to be aware of is just skipping through to section 18. Um, it talks about indemnification. Um, no, it wasn't actually three pages, but I'll go back up to section 10 because this is stuff I've already gone through, but inspection by citizens, you can do that. Um, removing um, or withholding from the custodian, you can't do that, so that's just clear. Um, public hearings, we all know that as the second reading of a public hearing is um, when you would have the public hearing, so I think that's why I skipped it. I didn't think it was, I thought it was pretty obvious. But um, 13, indemnification of municipal officers for losses and expenses. You don't have anything right now that specifically addresses how you deal with um, a citizen coming forward and suing any one of you individually for acts that you may do in your public duty. So if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing and operating like you're supposed to be operating and a, and a 
person from the public comes and sues any one of you, it does not provide currently that you would be um, provided with the defense. This basically outlines the fact that you would be provided with the defense and you would be indemnified um, if you are sued personally. And it talks about it, an expense being even litigation expenses. Um, so your legal fees would be paid and it doesn't have to be me. So it's not something that is created for me. This could be you, you retain your own attorney and then as long as it's a reasonable fee, then that attorney would be paid if you are sued individually um, because I can't represent you individually anyway. Um, indemnification, um, this just means that, you know, basically the city will indemnify you if you are doing something that is proper in your role as an elected official. And if you go on um, down to the bottom of the page, um, it, it just talks about the, your obligation, which would be to cooperate. So if the city is doing this, you would actually have to cooperate um, and make sure that you attend um, any depositions, that you attend court or trials or furnish evidence if evidence is necessary, that you would grant um, the city access to do, you know, what it needs to do to, um, or, or to, to basically um, defend um, your, um, your, your honor, basically. Um, if it also provides for um, inf um, for information that describes what happens if you are not authorized to act in your official duty, if you're operating rogue and you're doing something that's against um, whatever um, um, you should be doing, then it, it basically um, at that next page uh, goes into how you will, will not be compensated and you know if there you have to basically give the official chef given a written notice of at least 20 days before a hearing and, um, and 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 these are things that you can consider putting it in or you can take it out it's it's totally up to you but I did want to bring forth that you all don't have anything like that that protects you now um, there is a section that talks about interest and administrative fees. Um, one of the things that some cities struggle with is what happens if there is an overdue account and how they deal with invoicing people and being able to add additional penalties. This allows for a 1% 1% penalty that may be imposed by um, the director of uh, um, um, uh, or, you know, of financial management or his or her designee. And it also talks about return checks. And so if there is a return check, you can get, um, uh, have a service fee charged of $20 or 5% on the face amount of the check, whichever is greater. Um, moving on to section number 15, settlement of claims. Um, this has to do with um, if, for instance, the city, um, somebody, hits one of the city vehicles and the, mi the damage is minor. It would allow for um, some negotiation with the person who hit um, the vehicle and, and, and the, the, to be settled without necessarily coming uh, forward to the city commission if it's less than $5,000. If it's over $5,000, then it would have to come before the city commission and the manager um, could have some discretion to, if it is a municipal claim, um, to deal with that if it's over five thousand dollars also the municipal claim um, would uh, then proceed to you all making the decision of what you wanted to do once the manager brings it to your attention so that's really what section number 15 is about and then the rest of it is just standard <coughs> language about severability and an effective date and that pretty much completes the um, the ordinance it's not anything you know like I said it's not anything scary it's pretty um, standard you can kind of uh, dive into it and digest it and then perhaps come back and decide what you would like to do or um, in terms of taking language out or or what have you at, at your next meeting but thank you for the opportunity to present that item Thank you. <coughs> we'll move now to our new business, which is the selection of our legal firm. And we have a motion to that effect if a commission has a, a 
responded that they feel should be our new legal advisor. You can make a motion, it needs to be second, and we'll vote. If the motion don't get a majority approval, then we can proceed with the second responder. If that don't get a favorable, then we re-advertise. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to offer a motion that we uh, entertain the services of Attorney Weeks. I'll second. It has been moved by Commissioner Everett and properly second by Vice Mayor Mervin that we uh, attain the services of Attorney Weeks as our legal representative for the city of Pahokee. Call for questions. Well, I personally think that we only had two people who actually qualified for this, and I don't have anything against either one of them. But when I made the motion, I specifically made the motion that we should advertise in LinkedIn, that we should advertise on Indeed.com, that we should advertise a number of places. It's my understanding that we advertise in the Palm Beach Post. If she hadn't been sitting here, Ms. Weeks, she would not have known. That's why I asked, how did they find out? If they didn't have somebody specifically searching for that ad, they wouldn't have known either. So I don't think we did ourselves a, a fair justice in, in the fact that we didn't advertise it where we might actually get some response. And again, it comes back to every time we have an RFP or we have anything that goes out, it goes out and we get one, we get two. And it possibly could be because we're not advertising it where people actually shop for stuff. And so I don't think that we should hire anybody tonight. I think that we need to go back out for an RFP or whatever, RLI, whatever it's called, and see if we can actually advertise someplace where somebody's looking for that advertisement. Any additional questions from the commission? I will say this, uh, I think the two firms that we have before us who made the presentation, they both are highly qualified, uh, both have a, a minimum of 20 plus years of experience. Uh, they both have a team that will represent for whole kid. Uh, even our biggest assets is the marina and each time we went out to do a propose on that we only receive one or two respondents for that so I think we have done our due, due diligently uh, to advertise we, we advertised at least 30 days uh, no, we it, no we did not okay I'm, no, maybe I'm wrong on we that advertised three days but I think we do have a qualified group that we can uh, select in addition to comments Hearing none, are you ready for vote? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Everett? Yes. Vice Mayor Mervin? Yes. Commissioner Bolin? No. Mayor Babb? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Commissioners. The Thank you, Commissioners. Motion passes by a majority three to one vote for the attainment of the weeks as our legal attorney. Now, we'll move to our citizen comments and general concerns. City Clerk, at this time, do we have any comments cards from our citizen? Yes, sir. The first one is from Mr. Bobby Coven. Next one is from Ms. Catherine Marvez.
name is Catherine Marvez. I live at 1838 East Pahokee, uh, East Main Street in Pahokee, Florida. Um, I've sat through tonight's meeting. I had my say earlier about what I thought, um, how this commission could do a little bit better. Um, I heard you go on about the positive things that you've done for the city, and I think that's terrifically wonderful. Um, however, I think what I didn't hear from here today is what my concern is, is poor job performance. The perception that we have that this group does not get their information through to staff, i.e. putting an ad where it belongs. You, Mr. Mayor, who have often said, I don't get reports from the city manager, I want reports from the city manager, and yet the city manager never gives you reports. Funds that have gone missing, funds that have been misplaced, funds that were due and owing for years and come up two years later because, oh, we forgot about that, or oh, that money was misplaced. You can't misplace money for three years if you're doing an audit of your books on a monthly basis. So the deal is, it's not about black, white, green, red, blue, or anything else. Nobody here has any issues with any of you. We would all think that we could all go out to dinner later on. The issue is strictly and solely poor job performance. We don't want to hear that the mayor is not getting the reports that he asked for. We don't want to hear that Commissioner Bolin is having her eyes rolled out when she asks questions that are legitimate for her to be able to vote. So if you want to be respected, if you want peace in your house, do a better job at what you're doing. I heard you say wonderful things about playgrounds and children, and that's all wonderful. I haven't heard anything about business development since I've been here, about the attempt to get business development. There have been so many businesses that I have spoken to who have said, forget it. That city hall is a nightmare, and I know you've heard it too. I know every one of you has heard it, and you know it. I know every one of you is not getting the reports that you ask for, and yet you sit up here and say, if the citizens weren't so vocal, so, so disappointed, so disrespectful, this is our outlet. So it's not about us and you, it's about poor job performance. So continue doing what you're doing, but do a better job. Thank you, ma'am. And I will speak just briefly on the business development. In the last three years, the city have attained 15 new businesses. Uh, the city manager and myself went to one of the largest retail conferences in the United States to attract and solicit businesses here. I just recently spoke with Mr. William. We will continue to work on generating businesses for the city of Pahokee. We can only control what we can control, which is improving our infrastructure, present a positive view for this city, and hope that businesses would accept that invitation to come to Pahokee to do business. But a large part of that is having the population and the support of our residents to sustain businesses. But that's just because you didn't hear anything about business development. It's a challenge and we still have a long way to go, but we will continue to work on it. Are there any additional comments, cards, uh, clerk? Yes, sir. Next one is from Metro Hughes. Hughes at 1897 Bacon Point Road and I would just like to say I have six pages here read, to write, read but I could just put it in a few words really quickly businesses are the what you build a town for children don't stay here because we have businesses they leave to go to work somewhere there is no businesses. And the hemp, her personal feeling about the hemp was being pushed onto this, all of you, wasn't it? 
No, it was marijuana that was pushed that's not past the state. Hemp was passed the Monday prior to Tuesday in the state of Florida. But since it was marijuana, that creates a negativity. So guess what? Can that marijuana? That was a $50 million corporation, at the least, that was before you. They didn't even get to finish this introduction of production, not of growing marijuana. So these six pages, if you don't put the business in here for the children, football field is great, but that's not going to give them a job other than football. And you know, I had it all right here, and I was going to say it all, but there, there is nothing, nothing here that you all are agreeing to. All the words that were said by the people here, and her, and the mayor, and the city manager, are the 95 words I looked at, 85 words I looked up to try to describe what goes on in here. Well, Margaret Thatcher described it as best as you can get it at her lecture. And there was others at the lecture. After the 95 words to 85 words I looked up, red flag, Mr. Colvin said some of the words also. And I said, what are, what are we saying here? Well, would you like the description of what we is going on here. Let's see. Since I'm not reading it all, I had six pages. Miss Thatcher describes this as devilishly. Okay, sorry. You, t time, time is up. It's up to them. We, 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 we have the point. Time is up. And I'm going I'm to I'm make a comment on this. You, you mentioned him, and you mentioned the city attorney. i just like to let you know the city attorney has worked hard in coming up with a workable economic agreement with that hemp company. We haven't given up. They walked out. We asked them to come back to the table and let's continue our discussion and negotiation. We have worked hard to generate businesses. Now you can again compare us with anyone else. It's a difficult task bringing businesses, but that don't mean we stop. We're gonna continue. We are business friendly. We are solicitating business, but we have a a, a partnership with the community to support it. In addition to cards. The next one is from San Quetta Calvin. Good evening, 1548 Singletary Avenue. My name is San Quetta Calvin. I've missed a couple of meetings here in person, but I have been watching the meetings online and maybe it was God working in my favor because I had a few questions that I wanted to ask that I'm asking. I'm one of the ones that had questions in regards to the lease for the marina. I haven't had a chance to see what has been sent up to Tallahassee, but the few what I'm asking is that before you sign a lease, I'll have some questions. I'll email them to the city manager that I would like to have considered prior to a lease being signed. I would like to know um, how much... Um, the company has written the marina for? Are we getting any money up front? Um, will the city be responsible for the campground if it's not? Will the, um, the services that the city is going to be providing? If um, we're getting anything as far as collateral, because I've heard before how companies have come in, walked away, water bill was left unpaid. So I would like to see if any of this is being put in the lease so that the city is not left responsible for all of this like it was last time. 
Um, how much is the rent going to be? How long is the lease for? Um, what type of business is the company going to bring to the marina? Is the, all of this in the lease? We talk about economic development. What kind of business is it going to bring so that it can bring some jobs here? I also want to know, um, is there anything in the lease that's going to interfere with the city or the citizens being able to utilize the facilities for meetings or city events? Because I know they have the annual barbecue up there with the um, Tri-Cities. Um, what are we going to be limited to with the marina? I would like to, before the lease is signed, that the citizens have an opportunity to give input and to see exactly what is in this lease. I know I am one that we that wants to, that wants to um, see the lease and have some input. Um, so that was those those were that was one of my concerns. And also, how long is this lease is going to be for? Be for? And is it in the lease that are we going to be taking care of the campgrounds or? Are they going to be taking care of it? Are they going to be paid by taxpayers because of now a private company have it? I would like to see if all of that information is in there. That's what I would like to see before a lease is signed. So I would like to see you all have a workshop before making a decision on the lease for the marina. And I know they've waited a long time, but as a citizen, I have that right to ask that question because I have not seen the lease, and I would like to because I live in Pahokee and pay taxes here as well. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. In, in addition to comment card, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Next one is from Sharon Coven. Sharon Coven, 3096 Bacon Point Road. Um, I agree with a lot that people have said tonight. But I can tell you one thing. It's one thing to come to a meeting when there's something going on. But my husband and I, we have been here in every meeting, unless we were sick or out of town, for over 10 years. 10 years. And we have, I have, you know, seen a lot. Seen a lot. And I'd like to ask the uh, mayor and the commission, is Bahokee any better since you've become a commissioner? I answer that for you absolutely, positively, yes. In the last five years, absolutely. That's my opinion. I'm not speaking for everyone. Well, I have no trouble in saying that I voted for each one of you up here. I voted for each one of you. And I've even worked hard on your campaigns, I Keith. Agree. Very much so behind you 100%. But I stand up here tonight and I'll tell each one of you, except for Regina Bowling, that I am disgusted that you have not done your due diligence to hold staff, city manager, accountable. We sit here meeting after meeting and you do not hold the city manager accountable. You're his employer, not him yours. It's time for each of you to do, your, do the job that you promised while campaigning and that you swore on the Bible to do when you took your oath to be a commissioner. The city needs to fire the city manager with cause, and there are numerous, numerous causes. We cannot continue as a city to do the same things and expecting better results. Just this last meeting, the city manager said that the marina work would be finished in 10 days. Last meeting. Why has nothing even been done up there since the last meeting? This is the way it is. Thank you, Ms. Corr, for your comments. In addition to comments, Corr. The next one is from Joanne Coberson. 
1621 East Main Street. I was going to hold my comment because I really never know what I'm going to say till I listen to it. Everybody was going to hold my comment because I really never know what I'm going to say till I listen to everything in here. And it's the same thing every time. There is, yes, y'all have done a lot, but it doesn't seem like any project ever gets completely finished. We've messed with this marina for four years. I'm ready to just, and they y'all had a RSVP, I'm pretty sure. And now we want to go back to changing it and doing this and doing that and being, if, if everybody in here don't know what we've discussed in the last four years of that, I'm like her, I've been to every meeting unless I've been out of town or sick. And we all know what's going on with the marina. And every time something, with everything, something always wants to end up getting changed. And Babs, he's met with Mr. Williams all over Facebook. He's met and he wants economical development. He wants to help us do this and he wants to help us do that. We see, we, tonight we heard what a great commission we had and what all y'all have done but we can't even get the dike finished or get the flat the splash pond up and splashing and it's winter again i am, i'm like her i'm i am thoroughly fed up with this city thank you in addition to comments card clerk. yes sir um the next one is from kirk patrick The next one is from Lonnie Spry. My name is Lonnie Spry. I live at 424 Royal Palm Court in Pihoki. And I'm like some of the others. I come to a lot of the meetings, but I miss a lot. And there's a reason why I miss a lot, because I am a minister and my ministerial duties is way more important than this. I'll come here listening to that some of the foolishness y'all talk about up in here. Don't even make no sense. And I want you to know, I voted for everybody up there on that diocese also, just like some of you did. But I'm disappointed in Regina Bolden because I worked like hell to get her voted in. And all she had done was fight the city manager, fight the mayor. You didn't get voted in for that. And I also want to say, for those of you who fight in the city manager, allow, allow the resident to speak. Those please, of you that fight in the city manager, y'all haven't read the Pihoki State of Affair since August 15, 2015, after the arrival of Mr. Williams. Y'all need to go to the, go to the uh, city hall and get a copy of this and see what's been done. Some of you are talking, but don't know what you're talking about. Until you see it in black and white, you need to be quiet. I don't dislike nobody in here, white, black, blue, or green. Some of my best friends sitting up in here right now are white. But I'm disappointed. I came to this city seven years ago. Some of the commit, uh, city managers that y'all had here was robbing the city blind. The males you had here was robbing the city blind. Ain't none of y'all got up and fought against that. Ain't none of y'all said fire him. Or fire them. But as soon as these people come in here doing everything that needs to be done in this city, y'all want to talk about fire. You know why you want to talk about fire? Because they ain't doing what you want them to do. They ain't kissing your behind. God bless you. In, in addition to comments, comments. The next one is from Mary Dabra. <laughs> Mary Dobro. Y'all shut up and listen to these people. This is enough. It's terrible. Come on, ma'am. Mary Dobro, um, Bacon Point Road, Pokey, Florida. Um, city Manager, is there any update on the Mel Tilla sign? We've kind of been going back and forth on that since June. I know you said it was in production. That, and also you said you was getting a drawing back in August. No tell the sign is probably close to being completed now. They've already came out and they actually did 
spot two locations. We just haven't decided which location we want to go with. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it should be done by now. They haven't contacted me, but they, they did put it into production. They did come out and, and measure or actually you know, uh, did the research for any so of there was lines. No like utilities that. there since I didn't see any utility. They lines. didn't indicate anything back to me once they came out. No. Okay. Well, I think it should be on the corner of the chamber, actually, so it can be seen when you come around the corner. We we'll take that under consideration. Yes, yeah. That's why I asked them to spot two locations instead of one. I knew that All was right. going to be a question. So. And I have one more. I was really kind of in awe when the attorney here left. Everybody had their head down. Nobody said thank you or anything. That was... The man did. I didn't hear him say it. No. no. Now we need Leo. I, I need think that both applicants for applying. If I oversighted that, it's on me. Well, maybe everybody's talking. Okay. I didn't hear you. Yeah, he did. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. The next one is from La, La Teresa Jones. Yes, thank you. Greetings, my name is Latresa Jones. My husband and I have been in Pahokee for two weeks now. This is the first meeting I've come to. I am from Detroit, Michigan originally. We relocated from Ocala because my husband is a retired deputy sheriff and he's going to Nova University to the dental school. We've educated seven children and coming in here and sitting down, this is where the community comes. I look at the behavior of council people, commissioners. I listen to people here, black and white people. This is 2019. I walk in here and I don't know any of you. And there's a total divide in the city. We come and we decide we want to relocate to, to build, to retire. This is foolishness. My husband needs a place to have a dental office. And I'm gonna tell you something that I know for a fact for all of y'all, all of you. I'm from Detroit. I know what bad government looks like and what the end result is to the children in the city. Now I'm here and hearing about a $800,000 football field and I know this school that I saw all over the internet don't even have air conditioning for these kids. It's mold in schools. There's nothing wrong with me, but there's something wrong with a system in place in here. Because they can play football, but them kids gonna end up dying in the end with mold in their lungs. We have to prioritize in this city. Cause I ain't going nowhere if I use my hard earned money and move it to a community. I live at six, where we live, honey. <laughs> <laughs> we live at 611 Amaryllis. And I wasn't because, and you all are talking about business, where the business, the people gonna live. You have to have housing for businesses to come. You have to. Certain things are common sense. Common sense. And when it stinks, I'm going to tell you something. And y'all better be careful because the government will roll in here and take over this city because it's not a rich city. It does not have income coming in. What do you all tell people like us that come to a place to move in the hood? And let me tell you, and they stole my refrigerator, but they won't do it no more because they know I'm not playing with them. It's about how you communicate, everybody. Y'all grown people. My grandmother died at 122 in this country. And I come to Pahokee and see something I've not seen in hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. And y'all all praying to what God? God's people don't behave like this. They get it together. And, that's what, and I even come up here to raise it. I came up here because I don't have no stop signs in my community. Thank my you. stop signs should not be yellow, sir. And I want some stop signs over there. I'm Latrice Jones. In addition to comments, card. The next one is from Patricia Wilson. No, I 
I'm Patricia Wilson, 731 Barack Obama Boulevard. First of all, I oppose the, the lease of the marina because listening at and looking at some of this stuff on Facebook make you wonder what's really going on. And for certain ones to pretend that they my friend, I don't deal with fake people. I call you out. Uh, Regina, I voted for you. But I thought you had more class than what you have. I'm going to say what I have to say because it's if, my man. Even if you disagree with the comments, please um, respect the person who's speaking. It's always. They talked up. about the city attorney. For years, this man has been dragging his foot. And every time they ask him for something, it's going to take him two weeks, three weeks before he get back. But yet and still, you went along with the program. Yes, I call him out on Facebook. My mother and father are both deceased. I have 980 family members that's Cromartis. I have 500 that's bikers. So I'm a, I'm a long lineage. I have officers that work for the sheriff's department. I won't call their name. I have family members. So I'm not scared of nothing. I want to say this to the mayor, the staff, the commissions. You're doing a great job. I want to say to the city manager, you don't have to answer everybody's call. If you answer everybody's call, you'll never get no work done. So um, therefore, I give you kudos to you. To the new attorney, it's hell here, but you're a survivor. To our city clerk, you have a lot on your plate. We, they call and say they want this done, that done. It's not that many hours in the day to get all this work done, but when they call the mayor, they get their little team together, call for town hall meetings, but I yet to see them call for one that's justified, a real meeting. So I'm saying to those who I don't like, you already know who you are. But I'm gonna support this town. I born and raised here. I, didn't, I wasn't brought here, I was raised here. So I've been here a long time. I left, came back 11 years. Things have changed. I've seen, I've seen the changes. So um, you got me. I'm here for the whole hall. So um, the commissioners, the ones that's working for us, continue working for us. The last comment card is from Robert Lambert. Seems like I must be the most hated person here in Pahokee for trying to invest, investing over $100,000 of my money, being here for three years, so I don't know. But one thing I would like to address to my friend, the city manager, is I have been trying since Hurricane Doran was bearing down on this uh, little city and our state as a Category 5, I've been trying to reach him by telephone. And I know he's mad at me. He's mad at me over the point counterpoint two and me having to go out and spend $1,650 of my own money to go get lines and properly secure that vessel, which had no insurance, which even with the winds that we got would have broken loose, only moored with two lines, very old lines. It would have broken loose. It would have destroyed other property. It would have destroyed your floating docks. So if I overstepped my boundary, Mr. City Manager, I apologize, but I have been trying to reach you for over a month. Uh, both by telephone and by uh, text message and by email. And, you know, if you really want development in this city, you really want business and you really want to move forward, you could at least return my calls. Thank you. Mr. Lamb, and, I, and, and Norm don't make a lot of comments when folks uh, speak, but I will make this comment. You have indicated uh, previously in the past the amount of money you have spent that, up at that marina. Now you're using the term 100,000. I'm not sure where that at as a mayor. I don't have any knowledge of you spending that type of money. Uh, you're uh, in the process, your company, of getting that bid. I wouldn't advise anyone because we don't know who's going to get it, if you're going to get it, to, to invest that type of money in there. 
you, you, you need to give this commission some evidence of your expenditure that you haven't received reimbursement and who gave you the permission and authorization to spend that kind of money. I would really be heartfelt if something happened where you didn't get that marine and you spent that kind of money. So it's a public meeting. I'm just putting it out there. That's a figure too high to just ignore and say, this man has spent that kind of money here in the city and haven't gotten any reimbursement. Mayor, you and I have had some meetings in private, uh, and I would invite us to meet with you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that was the conclusion of the, uh, the citizen comments. Yes, sir. We'll now move, and I'm going to just ask the uh, city commission to be reminded for of the time and just do a maybe a conclusion of uh, the meeting without going through a whole lot of drawn out uh, comments and concerns. But at this time, I'll start with our Commissioner Regina Bolin. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Um, Mr. Spry has already left. Ms. Wilson, I want to say to you that. Um, I don't have a problem with anybody. And I didn't go out and campaign and make promises. I told everyone I would do the very best that I could do. I am doing the very best that I know how. If anyone has an issue with me, I wish they would call me. I wish they would come and contact me and tell me what that issue is so that we can work it out because I believe in working things out. But I am not, and I repeat, I am not gonna stop asking questions when I don't understand what I'm looking at. Because I took on this responsibility, and it is a very big responsibility to spend your money without understanding how I'm spending it. So I'm sorry if that takes a couple of extra minutes every time when I ask them questions. But for many years, I sat in the audience and wondered why the commission didn't ask those questions. So now I'm here and I hope that you all are out there wondering why I don't ask more questions. I know we've talked about the Marina lease and you all know how I feel about it. I'm, I believe that we need economic development in this city very desperately. And we cannot keep backing up on everything. It amazes me that Mr. Williamson sat there and talked about how aggressive this company is that none of us, or maybe the mayor, but none of the rest of us apparently, know anything about the old hospital and who's coming in and they're very aggressive. When Green Tone came in and was supposedly very aggressive for the hemp, our city attorney said, slam on the brakes. We need to put on the brakes. We need to slow this down. We need to make sure we're not pushed. I don't really understand how we can be one thing with one group and something different with another group when it's both things. I would like to see us because, as the mayor said, he talked to Mr. Williams and uh, he said that he would be interested in the hospital. So before we make any decisions, I would say we need to go out for an RFP for the hospital. And this time we need to advertise it correctly so that we get it in the daily business news, in the Wall Street Journal, in places where people advertise commercial properties. But to just start to negotiate and give site control to someone without ever bringing it to the commission to ask if that's what we want, I don't appreciate. I'm still waiting on the explanation for the $206,177,000 and how we paid it and how that didn't affect this year's budget. We are supposed to, in January, according to everything I've read, do the city manager 
evaluation, and we haven't even negotiated last year's contract yet. I don't understand why we make rules and we have things that we're supposed to do and they just fall by the wayside and we never get them done. I agree. We are hired by you. I'm here for three years. I'll do the very best I can. And after three years, if you don't like what I did, go vote me out. That's okay with me. Because I have to go home at night and sleep after these meetings, and I have to know that I did the very best for everybody that I could. Not for one section, not for one group, not for one people, but for everybody in Pahokee. I work hard every day trying to bring businesses in here and make sure that this city grows. I care about the kids. It's a it's not one thing that's going to make this happen, people. It's everything. We have to work on it all at the same time to make this happen. And we have to pull together. We can't be arguing amongst ourselves. Do we want economic development? Then fine. we got to act like a business. Because if we don't act like a business, we can't attract businesses. We want housing? Good. We need to be talking to housing developers and bringing them in here. We all say we want things, but we've got to start acting like we really do want them. And the fact that, and I'm going to go back to this because it just bugs me, is that we have a contract that we signed and that, or that we negotiated on the marina. And now, after all this time, and I'm talking all this time in hundreds of meetings, now we're going to discuss it again and make sure that's what we want. Well, I don't know where everybody who had a problem with this contract was during all this time. They could have brought it up at any point and said, maybe we need to have a workshop. But to wait until he's saying in November we're going to be on the agenda for this. And we wait till the very last second now to start talking about it again. How do we look out there on the street? How do we look the business people? We look like a bunch of idiots. I'm sorry, but we do. And how do you expect businesses to come in here and want to do business with us when they, when somebody, they're here and somebody spent three years here waiting on us and waiting on the state and waiting on this and waiting on that and whatever it was that delayed everything. And now we're going to say, okay, well, we're not sure. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd go on down the road. And, and the lady who got up and spoke and said she just moved to Pahokee and she's talking about her husband opening a business as soon as he finishes school and all of that. We don't look good to people out there. We really don't. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to just sit here and pretend that, that everything's okay because everything is not okay. I have never seen such a mess in my entire life. And I'm sorry if that insults anybody out there, but it is a mess. And we can all pretend that everything is wonderful and we've done some things. And yes, we have done some things and they are nice. But we still don't have anything done at the marina. We don't have a campground that's done. We don't have a restaurant that's done. We don't have a tiki bar that's done. We don't have a marina that's done. We don't even have a public park that's done. Now, how in the world did we spend over $2 million and none of it is done? I'm sorry, but I'm, I, I've been a business person my whole life, and if somebody handed me $2 million, I assure you that restaurant and that campground would have been complete because those are the two things that make money. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir to a lot of people, but come on, we got to start thinking like business people here. Because if we don't, we're just going to run this city in the ground. And that's not what any of us want. We all live in Pahokee because we love Pahokee. I didn't, I wasn't born here, but I love Pahokee and I'm here. And I'm going to do my very best while I'm up here to do what I think is best for the city of Pahokee. And anybody who has a problem with anything I say or do, please, please call me. Please come visit me.
please knock on my door. I don't have a bit of problem with that. And let's talk about how we can make it better and work together. Yeah, I'm taking a breath. Hold on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> there is one thing I would like to say. This is the best city anywhere. And we all know it. And we all care about each other. At the end of the day, we really do. And we might argue, we're like family, you know, we argue amongst ourselves, but if anybody says anything about us, we all band together and go, not, no, you're not going to say that about us. So that's what we need to keep in our hearts, guys. This is our city. Don't, don't make it bad. Make it good. Every day, try to make it good. I'm not a preacher, but you wouldn't know it by that. Thank you. Good night. Mission Everett. It was something said um, that in the final hour, it is you know, not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Uh, it was stated early in the meeting and referenced about the Hebrew calendar date uh, being um, October 8th through October 9th would be Yom Kippur, uh, known as the Day of Atonement. Um, and there was a plea made that God would have mercy and forgiveness to be extended to Pahok in light of her leader's desire to pass an alleged, quote, unquote, evil document, uh, alleging and accusing the commission of attempting to censor uh, the public or her citizens. But I too, I too share that prayer and plea for atonement. For I realize that there cannot be existential transformation until there is a word called repentance. But my share for plea is a little different than Mr. Calvin's. Because while in one breath we can talk about an evil document, I have many issues with evil words being stated and said about a certain sector of this community. It's very beautiful to get up and make impassioned speeches and sound cute and say that it's not a black or a white thing and you have to deal with people and I heard you and you're gonna hear me. Uh, call individuals roaches and apes and monkeys and call me the Negro bull and all these kinds of uh, adjectives. Uh, idiots and arrogant and my thing is if you know so if we're gonna call for forgiveness and and we want to talk about atonement and all of those things uh, talk to some of the people you sit and grin and skin with that have made such inflammatory statements concerning a sector of the community while in the same breath we say it's not a black or white thing is real funny. The things that citizen sends me, that individuals post on Facebook about a certain sector in this community. So I share the plea for atonement. When I look at the word atonement, it's, it says at one. I would love for us to have unity in this community, but we need to be real and honest about how polarized our community is and how some individuals love to make racially charged statements against a sector of our community. And I know some people don't like this truth. All you got to do is look on the news. And you don't have to look very far. You can look right here in our community. The kind of words and labels have been given to a certain sector of the community. Uh, we talk a lot about business. I'm not a come here. You know, some people moved here. You know, I was born and raised here. Shive Island to be exact. 160 Shive Drive. Grew up at Shallow Missionary Baptist Church. I sat in St. James Church when different persons came to campaign. Could we talk about business development? Let's be real. Pahoka has been declining in business for years. 
We had a McCory. We had Glaze Mercantile. We had Bagcock. We had Jay Arns. We had Jelly Roll. We had candidate after candidate come to various churches in the Roaches community saying we're going to reopen the hospital. We're talking about corruption. Corruption language and talk hasn't just started. You had people accusing well stand, stand, families who have had standing in this community for years that sat on that hospital board for misappropriation and mishandling and misdealing. And years. It, you, you would think the hospital just closed four or five years ago. This hospital been closed. It was one of the best hospitals. That I was born there. People in Belglade would leave and bypass Glaze General to go to that hospital. So people, come on, let's be real. Let's be honest. The economy in our com uh, community has been down for a while. Why? Oh, I, I guess it was the city commission's fault that Brian closed. The mill closed. As far as the mole and all of that in, uh, at the school, that's not a city's problem. You had your district representative right here. You could have talked to Marsha Andrews about the mole in the schools. Now, unless uh, the mayor and the city manager didn't inform me, that that's not under our auspices. That school's been deteriorating. It has been a problem. But let's not act like these issues that we're bringing to the forefront are issues that just even, just stepped on the scene. We've been not having Burger King. Did we close it? No. And while you're talking about business and restaurants, I don't see a lot of people frequenting town center. But I heard a lot of conversations against town center on Facebook. So let's not talk these cute and beautiful speeches and I take my head off to Pastor Hickman and the Glaze Covenant Church, Community Church, I mean Pastor Hickman and Poker the Deliverance I mean for opening up the smoothie shop. Mm -hmm. for, for people who may not be millionaires who decided to open business not outside the community that they live in but right in their community. They open up business, and, 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 and it's doing something to improve the quality of life. But the issue of business has not just stepped or, you know, just stepped on the scene. It's been an issue. We talk about, you know, looks and how people look. I apologize. My dad and mama raised me to be a proud black man. That I don't have to walk and step off sidewalks anymore. I don't have to hold my head down. I was taught when someone speak, you look them in the eye. And I'm sorry that I don't have uh, this uh, this Mississippian uh, way of living. I don't I don't laugh if I'm not tickled. I don't scratch if I'm not itching. I don't borrow money from none of the people around here. I didn't know. Uh, Miss Weeks from a can of paint, and I don't have no deals with her. I, you know, I, just like you see my body language, I hear comments being made about it got that must be a money thing. I don't need nothing from any of you all, because unlike some of the comments on Facebook, my mama wasn't on welfare. She's a college educated woman. My mom and daddy worked hard. He was a businessman in this community before going to Palm Tran. And when I bought property and when I bought land, I didn't borrow it from the bank. I borrowed it from my mother, and I'm paying her back now. So all of this about needing some money from somebody, I don't do that. So uh, just like a comment was made about warrants going to be, I live right across from Shalom. So any warrant need to be sent, send it, you can send it there. But this has to stop. And when I talk about race, we, we, we get oblivious to the fact race does matter because it's an issue. Because if race didn't matter, you wouldn't be calling me monkey apes, roaches, and the Negro bull. Those kind of comments wouldn't be made if race wasn't an issue. I think some good things have happened in our community, but I don't think we're above reproach. I don't think we're above uh, criticism. I don't think we're above uh, people calling us to the carpet. 
But the book I read, whether you agree with it or not, I read the same book you read, Ms. Carvin, and it does say, come let us reason together. Reason. We could be, we could disagree, but we don't have to be violently disagreeable because just like you're human, I'm human too. And I don't think I'll be able to take much longer the name calling because I got a few names in my satchel. Good night. Not at this time. We're, we're late. She's a staff person right there. You had your opportunity. And you don't give me a chance? Mr. Colvin, we're not going to entertain back and forth. I have nothing bad to say. I just want to respond. Commissioner Vice Mayor Mervin, any comment? Um, just um, short, two things. First of all, I would like to say um, after carefully consideration and hours of prayer, I was compelled to pen my observation of our colleague body. We have been elected by the residents of Pahokee and duly accepted the oath of our nonpartisan office. Our task is to develop the best policy and make the best decision based on facts presented to us for the residents of Pahokee. We can only do this by being unified in our decision making, being disagreeable without being confrontational and argumentative. We can and we must do this. Yes, I know we will not please all, and they also know that all will not be pleased. In order for us to, as one body to complete our task by to create and pass the most appropriate and policy to govern our city, we employ a professional manager to manage the daily activities, attract talented personnel, present to us a budget that will be in the best interest of our city. Nowhere in the employment of our manager, we must like the manager. No matter we like or dislike our manager, we must engage with them. Our level and our type of engagement will determine the type of results the, res the residents of our city will gain. Should we as leaders engage with our manager, we will become unified and that same unification will spread through our community. This is being shared to, be, to begin the unification of our commission, the city, and subsequently the community. I strongly believe that unification, active engagement, firm directive, and a two-way communication will bring vertical growth. I urge us as elected leaders to move this city forward and, next, and let the next level so that the great things we as fellow residents of Pahokee know are possible and know could become reality. Another thing, they made a statement on, I think it was Petro made a statement on, if I'm allowed to say, uh, I'll send your turn to that. They talked about green tone. If I'm not mistaken, you can correct me. We are already still doing business or talking back and forth with Green Tone. As a matter of fact, we do have, uh, am I allowed to say, that yes, where you talk about Green Tone. So when they say we just shut them down, we did not do that. Am I correct? Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, no, no, um, Vice Mayor, we did not do that. Um, the manager and I had a meeting with um, the lawyer who was here from Green Tone a, a, a few weeks ago. Um, since that time, I've taken an extensive amount of time and um, and thought and and uh, in working with the manager, putting together an economic development agreement. Uh, we've since heard back from the attorney who said that um, he, he's wondering, you know, when we can talk again, and we will do that. But in addition to that, he had some other questions, and so um, we just got that email, I think, today. And so we'll be following up with him um, to, to answer um, the, the, some questions through the manager that, um, that the person had. So we're in um, communication. And um, and the issue wasn't not whether we would do it or not. It was getting the information that's necessary in order for you all to make a reasoned decision, and also to have it in a format that would be most beneficial for the city. So that is our job, and so we've been doing that, and um, hopefully we'll be in a position at some um, um, future date soon to present it to you all and let you consider. Um, what we have um, come up with and what's been discussed. So there's still a lot of work to do. The state has not um, 
come down with regulations yet, so that's still something that's pending out there. So we've tried to work around that by putting some provisions in the um, in the proposed agreement that might address those kind of things. But there's still a lot of un unanswered questions, and um, and we hope to be able to speak with you about it through a workshop. Thank you. And it's, and the second thing is as far as the marina. I don't think no one here said that there were going to be any changes made, but I think it is fair to open up and let the public have say so if they have questions. And Mr. Lever held up the contract. We did not get a revised copy of the contract. So that's why I asked if we can get a revised copy of the contract that Mr. Brandberg had did before he had left. That's all we ask. The second and third thing is uh, I would like to make a motion, um, Mayor, that we would um, consider a Glaze Global Business Group, that we can uh, give a directive to the city attorney and the city uh, manager to give some discussion, or may probably make an appointment with them and meet with them concerning uh, their proposal, if, if need be. I'd like to make that motion for the 35 acres. Second. It has been moved in by Vice Mayor Mervyn and probably second by Commissioner Everett that we authorize our staff, the city attorney and the city manager, uh, to have a meeting with uh, Glaze Global Business Global huh? Business uh, to move forward their proposal or discuss it. Call for questions. Positive. What what are you? Uh, I'm confused by the the motion that You're, we would get that they would give conversation to uh, meet with Glaze Global uh, Business Group. Oh, okay. In addition, questions. Harry Nine, call for vote. Roll call, Madam Kirk. Vice Mayor Mervin. Yes. Commissioner Everett. Yes. Commissioner Bolin. Yes. Mayor Bab. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. That's the conclusion of your yes, report. Please. Having all business been the taken. The question was asked, what is it? It's a uh, oh. group led by Mr. Morrison in the audience, and he has a proposal concerning housing, uh, also on the 35 acres of land uh, that is uh, also in discussion concerning, you know, him. All business being brought forward, been taken care of. Call this meeting adjourned.